Hey, welcome, Stun Hunger fans. Dead gum, y'all are already out there pawing at the gates. We got James Faust and Jack Snavely climbing all over each other, trying to get in first. Looks like James won. Sorry, Jack. Uh, but uh, anyway, welcome, and uh, y'all, uh, y'all join the YouTubers tonight. Maybe one of these days you can come in live with us. And uh, hang on just a minute. Let me get my uh, background feed muted and everything set up correctly. And uh, the link is posted in the usual place, which is on Stunt Hanger Control Line forums in the uh, live streams slash at the bench thread. That's not the open forum. It's a couple down from that on the main list of forum sections and it's under live streams the name of the thread is at the bench and i always post the link the moment the show starts and it's in the uh and, and the date is in the title and uh so all you got to do is open <clears throat> open that uh, link to today's show click uh, or open the post to today's show click the link and you should be in um if you have a gmail account you've probably already done everything you need to do to be set up which is be logged into um, google and logged into chrome if you're using chrome um, some or all of that may or may not be necessary it's just like computers you can't put your finger on exactly what to do but that's that's where to start okay so Anyway, uh, let's see. We got Bob Bishop out there, and um, so uh, we'll hang out here, wait for some people to come in live. Meanwhile, my usual stuff. I uh, appreciate all of the donations y'all give us through the super chat button, which is that block dollar sign down at the bottom of the YouTube chat box, and that goes to uh, Sparky for server fees and uh, equipment and uh, so a little bit of it goes to my hobby budget, so we appreciate that. It helps keep the show on and keep the show free. And um, so, if uh, y'all are able to click that, give us a buck, and uh, uh, we'd appreciate that. And if you can, I mean, if you cannot appreciate that too, I understand it. And if you just don't want to, uh, that's fine too. Everybody's still welcome. And we're here to talk about aero modeling and primarily control line is what we talk about being the control line aerobatics forum stunt hanger. Uh, but we'll talk about RC. We'll talk about planes, trains, and automobiles, anything you do with tools in your shop. Are you a machinist or are you a mechanic or are you, you know, any kind of person that likes to work with your hands? We got something for you. You got something for us. So. Glad to be here. Glad it's springtime and glad it's Friday. The weather's nice. Oh boy, Jack, thank you. We just got a super chat from Jack. Thanks a lot, Jack. I truly do appreciate that. Um, but anyway, uh, oh, we got somebody sitting here waiting to come in. Looks like Mike Lineke. I'm getting a little slow on my clicking. There we go. Mike's in now. Hey, Mike, how you doing tonight? Going on, Rusty. Oh, I got a open my speakers now i can hear you i couldn't hear you there at first <clears throat> what's going on brother not much just another friday night glad to be here and all is well um what i was uh complaining about earlier in the week uh, about worried about having busted another bone is not the case it's just an arthritis attack i've never been so happy to have an arthritis attack in all my life so <laughs> i can live with that glad to hear it glad to hear it yeah, me too. And it's starting to it's starting to resolve a little bit. So we'll be good. Did you say you and got nice weather there? What did you what did you ask me? Did you say you have nice weather there? We well today it was windy and scattered showers, okay. but we hadn't had any of the um uh, uh have, you know tornadoes and stuff like that where right where I live. I know there were some in North and South Carolina, but as far as my neighborhood, I'm okay. You had nice weather. I was jealous because uh, it started raining this morning, and our high today was 45. Holy shit! 
Just no, we got up into the 70s today. Not not so, much over 70, but I, still. I actually, uh, I built a fire in a fireplace about two hours ago. I got to go in and there and tend it pretty soon. Oh, wow. My wife was like, it's cold. You need to build a fire. I said, it's almost May. We don't need a fire. And she's like, it's 45 degrees. Yeah. So, Hell, we just had the air conditioner on last week. Now I we need know, a fire. Right? And it's it's rained pretty hard all day today, and uh, it's going to rain all day tomorrow. But then Sunday's is supposed yeah, to. Yeah. Now tomorrow it's not going to get out of the fifties here, so uh, it's supposed to be uh, uh, windy and windy and rainy and chilly tomorrow. Yeah. So that's probably what you got today. Yeah, um, kids were off school today for Good Friday, so Sam and I have been working in the shop all day. We pulled some more stuff down and. Worked on a few, and uh, we actually took a break and ran to the hobby shop mid-afternoon, which is it's about a 30-minute drive for us. It's about 25, 25 miles away. That sounds like fun. I wish I had a hobby shop to run to. Don't anymore, though. Here comes Sparky. Hey, Sparky. What's up? Not much. We're just, uh, just getting started on Friday night. Lynn Burrell's out there. He says hi, Rusty and Mike and Sparky. Um, and uh, got that background chatter came in as soon as I let Sparky in. But yeah, I don't think it's, it's, hopefully it won't interfere with anything. It turns right. and goes. And Gary Sinclair is there. We are back. Yes, we are, Gary. We're about to get that calendar polished off. I think he's hoping for a picture of Sparky's plane, or I can try to clip one out of the videos if I, if I can get a good screen shot of holding it up. But anyway, um, so Lynn Burrell. I'll be killing bugs while we're. Bobby saw. Lynn Burrell is trying to uh, join up so so he could uh, get in, and I uh, was having trouble last week. We got on the phone for a few minutes, and. Uh, had no luck, but Lynn does not know much about computers, and I was trying to show him how to cut and paste text, you know, a URL. He was going to bring his laptop. So, Rusty, there's, yeah. so much, there's so much background noise right now, I can't understand anything you're saying. It's just garbled. Okay. Yeah, I could hear it while I was talking. I don't have anything running. I don't know what it is. It's there it goes. You're good now. Okay. Now it's good. So good now. it you seems to back. come and go. I'll turn my sound down a little, but I don't think it's reverberation from that. But anyway, uh, Lynn Burrell was trying to get in and uh, uh, we couldn't work it out. So he was going to bring his laptop home from work. And Lynn, you're watching now. Tell us what the uh, story is. Did you get anybody to help you? Uh, to join our uh, video chats, and we'll wait and see what he says about that. Meanwhile, what you what you fixing to show us, Mike? Oh, nothing. I'm I'm killing bugs, man, with my bug assault. Uh, oh, oh, cool. You see these things? It shoots uh, salt, and no. flies, and mosquitoes, and stuff. I've got these because I leave my garage door open at dusk, and I got fluorescent lights in here, so I get these. They look like daddy long leg spiders, but they got wings on them. They're huge, man. They're they're like inch and a half. Those eat mosquitoes. That's well, what we call a mayfly. But I don't think they're mayflies. Uh, they could be. I don't know, but I got them thick in here, so I've been hunting. <laughs> Busting them, huh? <laughs> this thing's pretty good, man. You can get like two feet away and aim at them, and it shoots a blast of just uh, table salt. Is what yeah. you look in there, just table salt. Scatter shot. Christmas last. Loved it. Hang on. Al's calling me. I'm on mute for just a second. Well, for those watching, I'll give you a little explanation with what's going on here. What I'm doing with this airplane is I'm going to revisit it this year. I've uh, re trimmed it. I'll, uh, by the end of the weekend, I'll have taken three ounces off of it. Um, I changed to the 9,000 yen carbon fiber fuel tank. That knocked an ounce and a half off. I'm going to change the spinner. That'll knock a, another 
nine tenths off, and I'm going to change out the landing gear. I have the spinner here. These are the spinners that I made. They're uh, an exact replica of the Randy spinner, only they're plastic. And I just need to cut out the uh, prop slots, but uh, this is nine tenths of an ounce lighter than the Randy spinner. Of course, you're going to add a little bit when you paint it, but uh, I don't see adding more than, you know, four or five grams. But all of that weight is coming off the nose so that the airplane will turn better. I'm also going to move the lead outs back one hole because I don't think it's far enough back. The way it sits right now, we were at 62. I'm at 60, 60.25, and I'm still extremely nose heavy. So I think revisiting this, this has never been to the Nats. I might, I might take this one because I'm having a hard time with where I'm at so I gotta I gotta do what I gotta do so that's okay, yeah. well you know Sparky if you're not happy with it you can just leave it with me that'd be okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> this airplane is five years old uh, I, I flew it yeah, I, I did. No, I flew it at Brodax one year, and I I don't know. It just didn't perform the way I wanted wanted it to. It felt very sluggy. And so I was sitting hanging up on the wall, and I was looking at it. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's a nice airplane. It's got a beautiful finish on it. It's a 19 pointer, and uh, I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> I got to take this back out and play with it. So that's why I revisited trimming this particular airplane, but all three ounces is coming off the nose, so that'll help it quite a bit. Awesome. I like the red and yellow propeller. Is it dyed or did you paint it? I like paint. Nope. And then uh, urethane over the top of it. Yeah. You might see this one at Joe and all too. Either this, either this one or the one above my head. I, I'm not sure. I uh, I don't have any way to paint this weekend. So, well, speaking of Joe Nall, I am trying like hell to get there this year. I I think it's going to work out. Uh, the only hang up is going to be my wife is on jury duty. She has to call in the whole month of May. She's got to call every Monday and see what day she has to show up. But if she doesn't have to show up the Thursday and Friday of Joe Null, I'll be able to go. You ever been? No, I've never been. This will be my first year. You won't um, believe it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, but I'm familiar. Uh, Sam and I watch all the, the Joe Null videos all the time. He actually knew about Joan All before I did. He he found the damn YouTube videos of the RC guys on there. So um, it's up in the air whether Samuel's going to be able to attend with me or not. Because I'm I'm pulling him out of school for Huntersville Thursday and Friday. We're going to leave Thursday. He's just got a field trip Thursday that he'll miss. And then one day of school Friday. <clears throat> I just don't know if I can pull him out again for two days, two weeks later, you know. I'm going to I'm going to go talk to the principal and sit down and see if I can get uh, an excused absence for those two days. And if she'll excuse it, I'll take them because, you know, I mean, Sam, I, I'm hoping he participates in model aviation all his, you know, through high school and he can get some AMA scholarship money, you know. Maybe I'll have like, like Sean uh, uh, McAtee. I knew Sean was a little tiny kid, and now he's almost ready to retire out of the army, and he's a drone pilot. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of frame it that way to her that you know this isn't just toy airplane contests. This is, uh, you know, training for the nationals, and that, you know, building and flying model airplanes. He's learning a lot of science and shit that he doesn't even know that he's learning. You know. By building, he's learning 
construction techniques and measuring and how to use tools and stuff like that. Keller, Plus, Luke Gibson and uh, Bert Rattan came out of the AMA. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. more do you need? <laughs> yeah. If anybody can, if anybody can uh, swear persuade her to let Sam go, then you can I have confidence you can do that. Yeah, I just I just don't want to get him jammed up with attendance and, and anything like that that's going to affect his grades because he's he's pulling three A's and a strong B right now. And if there's any big test those days that that that'll sink his grade, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, school is important. I get that. But contests don't work around the school year. And, and I don't want him missing this stuff. You know, I, I love taking him to contests with me. Yeah. And he's only going to be a kid once. So a few days of school, I'm okay with that. But I, I can't have it screwing up his grades, you know. You volunteer at his school, don't you, regularly? I do. Uh, yeah, I do. I, not in his class. I'm, I'm working in Emma's class this year yeah. in the second grade class. I go in there every Monday for a couple hours and yeah. um, help. The teacher, the principal, she already knows who you are and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She, I've been volunteering at that school since Sam was in first grade. Four years I've been volunteering. Yeah. You, you understand kids well, right? What's that? You understand them kids well, right? You're right on their level. I yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, I mean, I figure you know, since I'm a stay-at-home dad, I and I do have some time during the week. I should. I should help out at school, like the moms that are stay-at-home moms. They help out and volunteer with the PTO. And uh, but man, you wouldn't believe the shit I had to go through to to be able to work with the kids. I to be a tier three volunteer there, where you actually interact with the kids and you're able to work one on one. I had to have an FBI fingerprint background check mm -hmm. through the county and get cleared to be able to uh, to work one on one with the kids. You know. Cause there's different levels of participation that you can have, but if you're going to tutor them and help them with reading or math or, you know, do any one-on-one -on -one stuff, they, they look up your ass with a microscope. Man. Well, that's good. That's good. Cause they don't want any fruitcakes in there or anything right. like that. You know? That's but, why uh, Biden will never be a teacher's aide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's leave the politics off of here, man. But uh, no, I mean, I like it. I like going in there. And, and you know, uh, last year, Sam and I uh, took a whole bunch of control line planes in there for science. They were studying. Uh, they had aviation week, actually. They were studying the Wright brothers in aviation. So we took some planes in there and I fired up an electric uh, combat plane right in the classroom, man. But they love that. <laughs> and then you know, Sam talked about his airplanes and uh, we brought his trophies in and, you know, so. I mean, I think that the, the teachers definitely know, and I think the principal is kind of aware of Sam's participation in model aviation, but they're going to gonna need to get a little more familiar. They're going to miss more school. You know? I'm just hoping I can swing her with the, it's not just playing with toy airplane thing, you know. Yeah. There's stuff here. And, you know, and there's, I sure hope, I sure hope y'all can make it. You know. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's any different than a kid that let's just say uh, does is in competitive gymnastics and has to leave school to go to a gymnastics tournament, Yeah, you know, or a science tournament, a robotics tournament, or, you know, I, I kind of look at it that way, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's flying toy airplanes, but it is educational. It is. Well, if a kid can learn how to build model airplanes, Later on in life, in his 40s, 50s, and 60s, it will greatly help him because you can do everything around the house. Yeah. Read a set of blueprints, you know, follow right. instructions. Right. Exactly. And the best thing is, he doesn't know he's learning stuff when he's doing stuff, you know? He's having fun, but he doesn't, he doesn't realize that he's actually learning something when we build an airplane together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eventually he'll develop a love for learning and, you know, consciously want to learn something new every day. You know, that'll evolve from this. Yeah. yeah. So, all right, I got to go check wifey's fire in there and see if I got to throw some logs on for her. Okay. But I'll be back. All right.
So what kind of week did you have, Sparky? Did you get to do any modeling activity? Not at all. Not a bit. Today, uh, I got up at 1 o'clock yesterday, 1 o'clock in the morning, went into work, and I drove all the way to 4.30. I came home, went to sleep, woke up about 8 o'clock. So, and my uh, the place where I paint, during the weekend is closed this weekend because of Easter holiday. Easter, yeah, that's right. He's got some family business to take care of. And, you know, whatever. So I'm kind of set back on that airplane up there. So that's why I was sitting here revisiting this. I like this airplane. It's, I like that Monado, too. I watched, that was the first plane I really watched you build. Uh, um, when it was coming along and uh, I remember Ron Cribs I think the first time he met you was uh, at a contest out and I don't know maybe it was I don't know if it was Tulsa or somewhere like that he lives in Oklahoma but but he said uh, you had him hold the plane while you did something maybe it was a pull test or something like that and he, he was nervous just putting his hands on it so uh, this one here hasn't seen much. Uh, it's only been in one contest. That was Brodax in, in 2014. So I thought I would bring it out. <laughs> well, good luck with it. I hope it does better. I mean, between then and now, I know you've learned some new ideas about what to do to make it fly right. So maybe maybe you can get some more some more uh, uh, precision out of its aerobatics. Well, where, where I'm at in, in building is I build them, and if they don't fly exactly right off the board, I don't bother retrimming them or whatever. I just build another one. That's what Bob Zambelli does. He, uh, he builds them and takes them out and, and flies them right off the board and just, just rips up the sky with them. And if he doesn't like the way they fly, I've seen him, I've seen him take the, motor and tank off and give them away. I got a couple of them like that. I built so fast, why monkey would I don't I never refinish an airplane. I'll never repair an airplane. It's just not worth it. Of course I did repair the Junar because it was an easy fix. Anywhere there's a hole. Anywhere there's a hole. No, 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 no. Do it this way. Sorry. Let's see. Oh, uh, Leonard Burrell asks, how many flights do you have on the Monado? So, Probably 40. 40. And then where there's a hole. Just gently back and forth. All right. We're going to put faster. So after retrimming, I'll take it out on Tuesday night or after work and we'll see how it goes. I didn't realize how big this airplane is. It has a 66 inch wingspan. Oh, that is big. Let me get the and, and it weighs about somewhere in the 60 ounces range. It weighs 59 out or you know it's it, it weighs 60.25 but it will be under 59 when I put the new landing gear on it and a different spinner. Yeah. What engine? What engines in it, Sparky? Super Tiger sixty. Super Tiger sixty. I'm finally happy with my airbrush setup. It's all ready to start testing with some fluid in it now. All I've done is blown air through it so far, but I got the pressures acting like I want them to now. Got all the leaks sealed up. I had I only had a minor leak, but with a something as precision as that, a minor leak is a big deal. And I was underestimating how much that was probably messing me up. Especially with a siphon type, with the gravity feed type, like Sparky told me to get. Uh, this is probably not as critical because it doesn't need as much pressure, but mine takes more like 
35 pounds instead or, or 35 instead of 15. Right. Yeah. And you just need to thin the paint out more. Yeah. I'll start with uh, 60 40 and see what happens. That'll work. It'll work on 15 at 60 40. May, even with the siphon, you think it'll pull it up there? This is. is it a dual action? No. It should. Is it? What is it? A badger? No, it's a Harbor Freight. I don't, it doesn't even really. Central pneumatics. It, it. You don't push it down and pull it back. No, you just push it down. Okay, it's single action. Yeah, it, it still should pull the paint up. At yeah. 640. And if I can get out there this weekend, that's what I'm going to do is put a test board up and just try painting some lines and finding out how it lays the paint on. I'm looking forward to playing with it. Well, I'm considering, uh, I'm supposed to go over John's in the morning to pick up some paint. And uh, I, I really can't have paint here in the apartment, so I'll leave it in my car all week. But I'm considering stopping at Harbor Freight and buying an airbrush compressor and running a 100-foot extension cord out into the field and painting the rest of the trim on this airplane Sunday, probably, depending on the weather. How is the weather up there th uh, this week? Has it been has it been Rainy. nice weather? Rainy. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, we, we haven't had any global warming. I, I, I'm praying for global warming, but... Uh, yeah, any time now would be all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, any time. It would be all right all through the winter as far as I'm concerned. Need that and daylight savings time. Yeah, need the cows to keep farting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing my part. Doing my part to fart. Uh, now, I know, now I know why we always call old men old farts. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm living the dream now. Well, you know why uh, there's low unemployment? Because everybody has two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Leonard Burrell, what's he posting on it? Let's see. Big airplane, but uh, weight sounds just right for the Tiger 60. We had guys... Uh, waiting at the door about ready to bust the door down on youtube when i was setting up the show so i hope we get a good crowd tonight we've been getting a big youtube crowd just about every night we got 14 out there right now i uh i, I went to our other site to see if it still works it does we got a super chat donation tonight too appreciate that i usually are mentioned that at the beginning of the show who was that from uh let's see it was either from jack or let me slide it back up uh yeah it was from jack snavely thank, thank you, very you much, jack. jack or let me slide it back oh man i didn't want to do that i wanted to mute the sound and there it is. Ah, show. Yeah, I hear my country country oh, yeah. voice in the background over there. Yeah, it's muted now. You know, everybody always hates their voice when uh, they first hear it on a recording. I've finally gotten used to mine now. And I'm letting Dennis Adamson in. Hang on, Dennis. There you go. Good evening, mister. Hey, how you doing, guys? Sorry I'm We're late. Good. Just chilling out on a Friday night. How you doing? Hey, life goes on. It's cold, it's rainy, it's windy, but uh, it's a good night to be on a uh, on a chat room. That, that sounds like Mike's report from Tennessee. Cold and rainy and windy. So you He's have got a fire going in the fireplace. You have the same weather we have here in Dayton? Uh, just about, give or take, probably about a half a day sooner than you got it. So it's cold and raining. Yeah. 
unfortunately, tomorrow uh, we're hosting the family Easter party tomorrow, and the Easter egg hunt is going to have to be indoors, I'm afraid. Oh, that sucks. Easter egg hunts are always supposed to be in green grass and, and all, you know, hidden in the bushes under the pine straw. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, the uh, eleven year old and the nine year old manage to do a lot better than the three year old and the two year old do. So, uh, so uh, you got kids that young, Dennis? Grandkids. Oh, grandkids. Okay. I'm not a young punk like you, Mike. <laughs> Fifty two this year. Happy birthday. Yeah. 52 with an eight-year-old and a 10-year-old. Think about that. I'll be in yeah, my that takes a lot of energy. Have a late start, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It was a late start. So I'll be in my 60s when they get out of high school, and I'll be in my late 60s when they get out of college. Yeah. How old are you, Dennis? Uh, 65 next month. Yeah. I thought we were pretty close to the same age. Yeah. I was 63 last month. Well, that's why I like uh, hanging around with control line people. They all call me kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when they're all 90. <laughs> I yeah. tell people that my crew is between 60 and 90. And if you're under 60, you're way, <laughs> you're a baby. Some of them creaky old guys can bust out a pretty nice pattern, though. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so Sparky, is that one of the old Monados there, or what is that? Yeah, I think you saw this in 2014. You were at Brodak. One of your big ones. Yeah, okay, okay. That's one you, you had that one at Brodak, I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I didn't much care for how it flew, so it hung on the wall for a while. It's been hanging on the wall, and I just looked at it, and as I stated earlier, I, I revisited revisited the trim on it it's, uh it was extremely nose heavy still is even though i took two ounces off the nose i'm gonna end up taking another ounce off mm -hmm. so that should help the turn considerably yeah i know you like airplanes to turn the uh it certainly wasn't heavy or anything like that was it no it's not heavy it's it's just a uh I don't know how to, this is a high aspect ratio wing. It's a geoboat wing, but with uh, four inches added to it. So it's a 66 inch wingspan mm -hmm. and a 10 inch root cord. And the nose is 11 and the tail is 18. So it's, it has the appearance of the long clock time turn, I, the push. You know, we, we trim our airplanes like you trim a sprint car. We're, you're staggering and, and offset and wedge and all that. Well, with with as much nose weight as I had on this, where it was balanced at, and this is still fairly nose heavy. Mm, wow, I guess so. Oh, yeah. And you see where my fingers are at, right? So it's, if I pull them forward, I'm about two inches behind the leading edge now, and it's still slowly dropped down. And that's with uh, two ounces off of it. So if I take another ounce off the nose, and I'm going to take try to take a half ounce off the landing gear, lightening the whole airframe up, we'll drop three ounces total. Is that be, 75 on that? No, 60, Super Tiger. Oh. It would be a sub-60 weight. You don't really have a lot of options in uh, changing motors then or anything like that either then. So. No, I can go to a Super uh, PA-75, but it's an ounce heavier. Plus it uses That's it. That's it. I think it might be able to go back to a, a 61 or something like that, but if you already had a Tiger 60, there's not... Not a lot of, you know, it's go really small, you know, but, uh, and it's probably not in the cards. Well, you know, there's one other thing I've, I've, uh, I've been reading about people doing this. They're flying nose heavy airplanes are flying and they're flying very fast elevator ratios. Oh yeah. And trying to overcome it that way. 
it's got a fast elevator ratio already, but it's just the clock time. It, you know, it was, when I flew it at Brodak in 2014, it just, the turn was just so slow. I like them to, you know, not like the old days. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, if I got to take the blue line filter off of it and uh, whatever I can do to get some of the nose weight off, I, I changed out to the uh, 9,000 yen carbon tank. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, you were talking about that, the, uh, what, $200 to save one ounce or whatever it was. That was on for this airplane? No, that's for the new one. Yeah. Well, yeah. 200 bucks to, to save one ounce. Yeah. The... Uh, so you got any options, uh, you know, as far as getting a corner and stuff like that? Try a smaller diameter prop or something. No, what I, I'm just going to go with the retrimming of the weight first, and if it still doesn't turn the way I want to, I'll go on, you know, I'll fly the other airplanes, but I'll come back and I'll cut a quarter inch off the flap. Mm -hmm. And then I got all that refinishing to do. Yeah. And this airplane is finished extremely well. Yes, it is. It, it's a front row airplane, you know, and so I, I kind of hate to cut into it and cut a quarter inch off the flaps. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was talking about a couple of weeks ago and I mentioned cutting the length of the flap. Mm -hmm. uh, the neat thing about that on a finished airplane is that all you have to finish is the end of the flap. And Whatever. But, but um, that was an interesting conversation. I committed that to memory. I'm glad. I'm. I'm glad you pointed out what you thought about that. Well, I, the only reason I mention it is that uh, the. Uh, I don't know if Larry Fruits is joining us tonight or not. I think sometimes he kind of watches on watches the screen. I don't think. I don't think he comments any. But his airplane last year. Uh, had a flap arrangement somewhat like yours in that, you know, they were, they were rounded or, you know, elliptical kind of flaps and faded out to nothing. And even with that, he was able to shorten his flaps down quite a bit and he was able to improve his airplane, uh, just the overall feel of it. Uh, airplane turned nice before, but it just has a, a lighter control load now. And a uh, doing that with this airplane is I have, these are my hinges in this. It has three hinges that are pocket hinges. Yeah. So if I cut the flap off, that means it'll have two hinges in it and then one on the flap end, you know, yeah. on the end of the flap that it won't work. So it doesn't sound like a, uh, a lot of options for you there. But, you know, refinishing the length of the flap, though, is like you say, it can be a real pain. So, oh, well, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll come to something there. Well, it's probably, like, it's probably going to happen is we're just going to take the nose weight off of it, try to get it as light as I can in the nose, and uh, live with it. And with How that, about any, uh, can you, any room? Can you go to like a carbon spinner or something like that? It looks like it's that aluminum. That's it's aluminum. Cool. This here is one I made that takes nine tenths off. So I'm going to take and change this out. This is an exact copy of this spinner, Randy spinner, only in plastic. And I made these. Yeah, that's uh, you get nine tenths off that far forward. That's that's huge. So that'll uh, that that's got to make a big payoff. So the tank made a big difference yeah. between the metal and the carbon tank. Yeah, but the tank is much farther back, has less of an effect on CG than what the spinner does. Mm -hmm. the spinner's all the way out there, so it's got that's a maximum lever. So that that'll be a good one for you when you put that on there. So. I don't know. I recall it was a good flying airplane the way it was, and uh, anything, anything more you can get out of it is uh, is that much better. So, I'm, I'm just I'm used to I got used to flying high performance airplanes, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that really turn. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I'm not. I'm wondering if it, going the PA seventy five is the right way for me to go because. Those added extra two ounces all the way out there on the end of the shovel really make a big difference. Well, 
the only other thing you can do is uh, start chopping off the noses and uh, see, you know, go back for bouncing and stuff like that. But I don't know. You build, uh, you got a knack for building very light airplanes as well as gorgeous airplanes. And uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know, the extra, the extra weight of the engine really isn't getting anything anyway. Cause you don't have, you know, cause your airplane's light enough. Maybe you don't need it. So, <sighs> Well, I tried to tell this to Ron when I built the Thunderbolts, you know, and he kept telling me to shorten the nose up short. I had one with a nine inch, eight quarter inch nose. And yeah, the motor was heavier and yeah, they balanced with an eight and three quarters, but they have no directional stability. You need that lever out there so that the airplane tracks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> And rock in a hard place and start uh, building uh, around smaller engines, I guess, all you can do are lighter engines. Wow, that's, these big airplanes just killed, you know, the performance of the airplane. Yeah. That's my opinion. Everybody thinks, oh, no, big airplanes are great. No, they're all right, but the 40 size airplanes flew much better, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, you're preaching to the choir on that one. Well, then why don't why don't I think I asked you last week? Why don't you fly a forty size plane? Because you won't get a score. The judges are blind. They can't they have to see a big old airplane. Bigger the better. Okay. I mean, if they fly better. Yeah, Lou McFarland in the '60s came out with that Shark 45, and we we're all standing there with your nerves and said, "This is the death of stuff," and it and it was. And it, Shark 45 is not even really a big airplane. Not like this. There is something that uh, I wanted to mention in the, my opening monologue and forgot. Will Davis wanted me to say something. Um, he's in the hospital again this week. He uh, went into the doctor earlier in the week and they found some more fluid in his lung cavity and so they they uh put him in and wanted to figure out what's happening um he other than that he feels good he says his appetite's back and he feels strong enough like he'd go out and fly a, a full pattern today but uh they're going to do a minor uh, arthroscopic surgery on him i think it's tomorrow i'm not sure exactly when it's scheduled but it's pretty much an in and out procedure to get um uh, uh, tube in to ventilate that fluid and, and get it out of there. And, um, and, uh, he's expecting to have a couple of days of observation after that, and then probably be back out of the hospital for good. Um, and so he wanted me to assure everybody that he, he, he feels like he's in really good health. Um, I think the doctors think so. And, uh, he wanted, he wanted everybody to know he's, He's going to be there for us when the spring contests come along. Uh, so don't, don't worry about that. And he's got good help. We've got uh, 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 a backup uh, uh, contest director and event director for Huntersville and, uh, and uh, triple tree and, and, and uh, also uh, Brodak. So uh, looks like those aren't going to be a problem. So nobody, nobody, you know, uh, have any doubts that Will's going to be back pretty soon. <clears throat> Him, uh, 10 minutes before we went to air, he called me at 8.20, well, 9.20, I guess, your y'all's time, and pretty much said the same thing. Yeah. He said he was so bored in the hospital that he was actually going to watch the show live tonight and not watch a rerun later on. So Will yeah. is watching it right now. <laughs> yeah. Live. Hello, hey, Will. Will. Hello, Will. Hey, Will. He's in yeah. a yeah. right now. It's Sorry, I didn't get that said in my opening statements, but uh, I, it just when people start coming in on video while I'm talking, it mixes my mind up, and I kind of miss that one. But uh, anyway, just that's wanted everybody will. to know that's not Will, that's Wheel. Wheel, Will, will, will. Davis. Yeah, the horse man. Hopefully, that'll make him smile. I hope so.
I sure wish I could make a mess in here. You know, sawdust, big paint, great living in your hobby shop, but <laughs> can't make a mess. Oh, we just got another super chat from Al Ferraro. Thank you, Al. Oh, what's up, Al? He's not going to join us tonight? I hope so. Al always brings a lot to the show. His daughter's probably singing at the Grammys tonight, so he's yeah. probably tied up. That uh, it helps keep the program going. Gives Rusty a little fuel money. Absolutely. Yeah, I got I got all kinds of cool stuff from you guys. And y'all didn't even know you were buying me hobby stuff. Hmm. Everybody thinks we're making a killing at this. You're sadly mistaken. I know there are some YouTubers that make big money, like PewDiePie. That's a full time job that those guys do. Here comes Steve Hines. Hey, Steve. We got the hand signal. There we go. Now he's got his mic on. Got it on. How you doing tonight? How's everybody? We good. good. Evening, Steve. Hey. Yeah, I've been trying to put my airplane back together. That doesn't sound good. How did it come apart? I did it take apart. I did it take apart, but I didn't care for it, so I put it back together. Run through that one more time. I said I made it take apart, but I just decided to put it back together oh. after it hit the ground. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, there was a bad thing I was watching on YouTube the other night. RC flyer flying a giant scale. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was a Tomcat or, you know, uh, the new one that they have anyway. It's flying along and he's doing some maneuvers. And just as he pulls up like this, the whole thing gets exploded in many air. Just came apart. Bad built. Oh, built. F-15 do that on YouTube. That you might do. The nose okay. came off. It, it separated right at the canopy. Yeah, the whole thing just poof. <laughs> Ridiculous. They must, be, they must be learning from the Brazilians. You got to use glue, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a real F-15 F do it on YouTube. The guy bailed out all right. Hmm. So, so the pilot was okay, but uh, it, it, he did a pull up and the uh, nose just broke off of the whole F-15. I mean, he looked out back and there was no plane back there. They uh, traced it down to, uh, uh, I don't know if, it, I think it was corrosion, actually. Yeah. 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 I'm not live on carriers that uh, you know in the ocean, so that salt air eats metal up. Yeah, I'm not sure. Some of them, the big uh, RC crashes, uh, you know, they they really go up in flame. There's a lot of fuel in them big old airplanes. And one guy had a. Um, Seven forty-seven, and there's that's on. That was a long time ago. That thing went in. When it went in, it was a major fire. I forget how many gallons of um, kerosene was on board that thing, like five gallons or something like that, when it went in. And yeah, at the end of the runway, there there was a major fire. Do you fire guys, do you guys uh, subscribe to Hobby Show TV? I do. Yeah. Hobby Show TV, where my girlfriend is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the Brazilian girl. Yeah. Uh, Why did they bring her to Brodax? They should have brought her to Brodax, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carolina. That's her name, right? Carolina? Carolina for Florista. Anyway, they have a 767 on there. That's got to be 25 foot long. I guess they don't allow those big airplanes in this country because I never seen nothing that big. 
I saw some German guys put together a, a, a model of a commercial airliner about that size. They they built it out of foam at a contest and then flew it. It must have been a long contest like Jonah Hall or something. Or, or a fly what, happened, what happened to the big one, Sparky? Oh, nothing. To, it's just a beautiful airplane, you know. Yeah, there's there's a few of them that uh um are I don't know I guess they were like uh, uh radio prop airplanes back in Germany they're big on that and uh four engines or whatever some bomber or whatever and it flew great I mean but you know it's got a I don't know what kind of lawnmower engine in it or some some big old engine in there powering them props, but it looked cool. Well, third, third scale is not uncommon in RC, and there are some half scale airplanes. But third, third scale is not uncommon, especially in Germany and Europe. There's a lot of big stuff over there. And, there, and the half scale stuff I've seen were like uh, World War I biplanes. But half How much are they allowed to weigh in this country? No, they have a maximum weight. Right, it's fifty-eight pounds. Oh, this this thing's got to weigh four hundred pounds. I mean, you can't you can't fly. I don't don't quote me a hundred percent, but I'm I'm almost positive it's fifty-eight pounds in the United States. Can't be bigger than that. I don't know. I thought even then, I thought uh, you had to get special waivers for me. You do. And stuff like you, that. But I you thought do. You, you do. But I think that's the max. That's yeah. as big as you can go. Well, this thing takes four guys to lift just the fuselage and then two guys to lift each wing. So, you know, <laughs> the, the whole thing is as long as a ProMaster van because they made a special van that they put it in and they tow the wings in a trailer. So it's huge. <laughs> got to be 20 foot long. Yeah. And it's got an oh, uh, I don't know, Spark, do you think they worry about saving ounces on that? <laughs> Pounds, maybe. A lot of putty, a lot of bondo, and a lot of paint. Uh, that's it. That's it. Oh. Actually, I am intrigued. There's been a few uh, posts on, uh, on, on the forum about uh, some of the guys. I can't remember it. The one uh, European uh, posted. A, uh, I believe it was basically a blue foam airplane with an epoxy skin that looked pretty doggone interesting. There's one guy on there that can really cut foam, that blue foam. Yeah. Yeah, he can really cut compound curves. And I don't know how the hell he does it. it looks great. Yeah, the neat thing about blue foam is that it's well, homogenized, basically. It doesn't have all the, little, all the popcorn in it and everything. You can actually get a reasonable uh, surface you know, continuity out of that stuff like that. You know, popcorn foam, you sand it, and it just kind of, you know, blinks away. But I thought that stuff had formaldehyde in it. It was uh, poisonous when you cut it with a hot water. Yeah. Was, no, that was the other kind. Uh, the urethane foam is uh, formaldehyde. That's the stuff that will give you cancer and everything. It's the uh, what the styrofoam equivalent equivalent of uh, of death paint, I guess. But, uh, yeah, cut it in urethane foam and then paint it with death paint. You know, living dangerously. So. You're not supposed to put your nose down. <laughs> You're cutting it. I went to buy a respirator the other day, and uh, uh, it was while I was getting my airbrush equipment and compressor and all, and they were really expensive. So I gotta I gotta wait. Uh, uh, a little while on that, so I bought some cheap disposable ones, but I don't think they're as useful for vapors. They're fine for particles and mold, but but uh, I think what I bought is only only good for particles. You got uh, but you're breathing that lacquer. I've been breathing yeah. all my life. I paint without a mask. It just goes away. It's not going to hurt you. You can't paint urethane with that with no mask though, because that's that'll make plastic droppings inside your lungs. Uh, but yeah. the, lacquer, the lacquer will dissipate. You you have a, a Harbor Freight by a Rusty? Yeah. They got cheap uh, charcoal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, do they? 
Yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't look for them when I was there. That was when I should have gotten it. Twenty bucks. So who's got flying plans for this weekend? Everybody here's got bad weather. I guess nobody does. You do, Steve? Yeah, we're planning on Sunday. I got good weather Sunday, but it's Easter, man. Got to do the we're going after the Easter bunny. I made a hole for it out there in the field. We'll see if there's a bunny in it come Sunday. <laughs> got to do the bunny thing. Got to do the church thing. Got to do the Easter egg hunt thing. But maybe after that, uh, wifey will let me and Sam tear out of here for the afternoon. We'll see. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to be nice in the 60s, but it's supposed to be 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. But if the winds die down, I'm going to take the airplane back out again and Late in the afternoon might be your best bet. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, more than likely. I got the airplane all back together. I just got to put some dope on it. I put some 64th ply patch on it. But Was uh, you and Dick flying? Yeah, we were flying Tuesday, and I... Which which airplane? Um, Something 2000 by Phil Cartier. Thanks, oh. Streak 2000. Was that Streak 2000? Yeah. I bought that from John Paris, and it was the best plane I ever flew. Didn't need, I mean, it was trim perfect. The damn thing just flew so good. Yeah. Streak, the only thing I can it's think of. 550 squares with the tips. How much? 550 squares with the tips, if you add the tips on the foam wings. Okay. I, I don't know. He just had it built. But I put that uh, in your 40 on it, and it balanced perfect, and huh. we're yeah. flying. It. Sam and flies I, I got on my damn hard point handle. I wasn't paying attention, and I think one of the clips got caught. Oh, yeah. Took off. I thought to myself, while well, we slowed it down, this damn thing takes off hard. And I flew it around. I started doing loops, and I was into the second loop and I heard a tink and it went like to full up and that, that thing just snapped upside down headed to the ground I brought it up and stole it something bam it went in and it, it happened so quick I don't know but the only thing I can think of is I had a a, a catch in my uh, in my down line hmm. and when it finally let loose and went back to normal it gave me full up <clears throat> but it went on his back real quick. And it was still flying pretty fast, but I was getting to where I wasn't as dizzy. You know, I was getting used to it. So I knew it was a little fast, but I didn't think it was Nick said it was four four six lap time and I don't know. It got away from me quick and poked in the ground and got my engine all dirty and Broke the tail on it, so I glued the tail back together. That's just ready to go again. That Streak 2000 is a really good profile airplane and easy to build for for 80 bucks for what Chil Phil's charging for him, $79. Yeah, I don't, I don't think big. you can get him anymore. Now he does this, the, uh, what's the other one? Rugged Stunt Trainer. And then there's the Gotcha Streak 3. The Rugged Stunt Trainer is smaller. Yeah, Gotcha Streak. Yeah, yeah. he's got the gar uh, Gotcha Streak and the RT RST. But the RST isn't very rugged. Tom Creasy's coming in. Uh, yeah, I just let him in. Mr. Dollar 38. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Sparky, did you get any more paint done on your airplane? No, not going to get any paint done this weekend. Just too busy or? No, my uh, paint shop is kind of closed this week. He's got family stuff to go to. So you didn't get anything done last weekend at all or? 
I got stuff done last weekend, but not not going to do nothing this weekend. How did, how's it coming though for for last weekend? I, I yeah, Monday, and I knew that the weekend you were going to start doing some more. And well, if you saw it Monday, that's where it's at. No, I didn't. I didn't see you Monday when I got on. I must have got on late. Oh, there went Tom. He wasn't here long. Oh well, he'll come back. I was going to step away for a minute, but I'll wait and see if he comes back. Hey, is Dick going to make it on tonight? We're going to get to see all his stuff, Steve? I don't know. I should probably call him and tell him to get on. Yeah. I wanna yeah, he was going to do a show and tell for us. Yeah. I yeah. see the rooms. Oh, it's it. nice. Real nice. So you just got what the... Oh, yeah. You just got the canopy to paint? And... No, there's... There's plenty to do. Silver stripe on the leading edge for the de-icing boot. The canopy, uh, red stripe on the wing going back to the stab, a yellow stripe going back to the stab, and a couple more decals. And then uh, I got a, I have a, a, a eagle's head that goes right here, and it'll say built, not bought. Oh, okay. It's looking good. Looking real nice. Yeah, built not bought. I like that. That's our slogan. Hey, I like bought airplanes, man. Yeah. <laughs> and free ones. Yeah, those are good too. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking really good. How is the weight coming into where you want on it? Um. I'd like it lighter. It's uh, probably going to be 62. You know, like, it's just the way it is. I mean, Matt Colin says he's got a 59-ounce SV-11. I wonder if he's missing the engine. <laughs> oh, that, come on, man. Oh, that new one of his, that, what do they call it, something? Dracula. Yeah. Dracula. Dracula. I wonder if it's a pipe plane or what. Yeah, it's got a PA-75 in it. Doesn't mean it's pipe. Oh, well, that's true. But, uh, see, the PA, this is why it's, it's you know, when it's in this configuration, 59 ounces is pretty tough. Because you got 24 ounces of hardware. You know, just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, the thing I always worry about with uh, with lightweight, with it, well, huh, I don't normally build very light, so I don't have to worry about it too much. But uh, somewhere along the way, uh, you might take a chance in durability or something like that. Uh, too much flex, too much, uh, you know, not enough vibration damping, things like that. So it's. Uh, I I agree with you, Sparky. Lighter is better, but you always always worry about the other side of it. Now, in his favor, the one thing Matt did that was that probably helped a lot is that you know his, his colors, black and silver, those are both those are like one coat colors and stuff like that. So he didn't have uh, he didn't gain much in that. And uh, he's been building real pretty airplanes and stuff, so I'm sure he's going to do. You know, I'm sure it's going to look good in real life, you know, in person and all that. Uh, but the black and silver, you know, one coat colors, is, man, that's a nice way to get, get to the promised land. So, but silver is the heaviest color because it's metal. Yeah. Yeah, but it covers really good too. So he doesn't have a lot of silver. Yeah, in his trim scheme, at least. So. Yeah, black is about the best you can do for for weight wise blue is also light but a lot of times you gotta you gotta put on a lot of blue it doesn't always cover real well 
The lightest color is primer gray. Hot rod. I would have guessed, guessed light gray, possibly light blue, or very uh, good colors for coverage and yeah, light, lightweight. That's the reason why the Thunderbolt, you know, were light gray. One of the reasons is because it, you know, you've got the primer there, kind of just a dust coat, and you're done. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But if you remember my 2007 Thunderbolt number three, it was metallic gray. I don't know. I'm trying to think. The first one I saw, I think, might have been about oh nine or so. Well, that would be that would be number three. Okay. The other one, number one, lives in Las Vegas. I sold it to Joey Matheson, and uh, he's got it. It's still alive. Number two is in the ground at Buddha Park before 2007, and 2007. Number three came out, went to the Nats, and then I flew it until I ran out of fuel in in uh, Memphis. Hit the ground. There's another. Um, oh, Sig made it, and everybody called it like baby shit something or other. Um, we do much. Come here. Done in it, and it covers real good. It's almost like they said people used to use it as a primer. In a base coat, and I can't. Game cream. Yeah. Yep. I ain't a cream. Yep. Maybe hey, Sam, should. how you doing tonight? Good. Good to see you. Looking forward to seeing you guys in Huntersville. You too. You can talk louder. <laughs> you too. I can. I can hear you all right. Okay. Yeah, me and Holly will be there. Coffee and donuts for everybody. Maybe Holly will bring you some candy again and get you all hopped up on sugar <laughs> contests like she did last year. Oh, did she do that last year? <laughs> yeah, he came back to the room. He had a whole pocket full of chocolates and candies and hard candy. And I was like, where'd you get all that? He said, Holly gave it to me. <laughs> the way this sits right now, it's at 59 ounces. So going to be, you know, 60 plus, 61, 62 with the clear on it. How much does the clear coat add per coat, you figure? An ounce? I got one half pint of crystal clear that's going to go on this, and that'll probably add an ounce. Maybe, maybe two. I don't know. Yeah, I'm wondering what uh, Derek Barry's new airplane is going to weigh. Paint is heavy. There's just no way around it. Uh, I know that. I still like uh, Derek Barry's um, Matrix. To me, that was the coolest paint job I still I've ever seen. But I guess that thing was it was just horrendously heavy with all that he folded up the green one all the green one yeah I still, I still like the matrix with everybody's name in there and all the letters going down and paul walker and and just everybody's name that he could think of in that damn matrix it looked like just about a random letters but if you pointed it out you could pick names out in it i didn't notice it <laughs> you never knew that no yeah, there's different people's names in that paint job. It was all all the top stunt guys were on there. My name was on there. I was, was it? Yeah, if you look hard, you can see it. Oh, I thought that I thought that was a big oil spot. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, I I'm just bullshitting, man. <laughs> yeah, we got a conversation over in the YouTube side that ought to be in the conversation here. And uh, Jack Snavely said that uh, when his uh, planes started getting bigger he started having trouble with tail flexing and um i suggested he use a half ounce fiberglass or carbon hey, nail that helps out i oh. told him i had a 1 16th by 7 16th strip hey. running the length of my cardinal rear feet lodge and um, let's see uh, he says he thought doublers 
but then he thought that would be heavy, heavy, and just oh, okay. every carbon sounds like a good idea. This and, you need right here. And then I told him finishing, apply it with finishing resin rather than dope for the stiffness. And I'm wondering if everybody agrees with that. This is what you need right here. This is 15,000 carbon, carbon fiber, and it's not cloth or not veil. You uh, laminate this to the trailing edge inside inside the stabilizer and then cut it off so you're only using about a half inch wide of this. And uh, and you and you put it in this way so it's up and down, not this way. And you can't flex it. And you put it, you glue, use a thick Low set CA to attach to the wood, and you really? won't break it. Yeah, and he was. Did you get that from England? No, this he came from me. aerospace. Okay. Yeah, is that, that looks like it's got a backing on it. It is. Is it as stiff as what it looks like when you pull that backing off, or is it not got a backing? It does not have a backing on it. This is. Uh, I mean, it would be nice if it did, but. I, yeah, all I do is I take a 80 grit sandpaper and I sand the back side of it of the strip. So you, let's say your trailing edge is a half inch tall. You cut a half inch strip out of this and I sand that strip and then run uh, run the thick set CA it, down that and then press the if you look at if you look at uh, Billy's I beam, uh, construction. He uses it on the trailing edges of the I beam wings. Mm -hmm. Things. So what you're doing is using engineering for strength and and you know modern material. Yeah, Doran was was saying maybe he'll get on. There's a place in England that he gets something and it's carbon fiber and it's real thin like that, just sizing on it, and he cuts it and. Uh, and he says that uh, it's just crazy strong. It's mathematically, however they figure it out, it's worth like four inches or two inches in balsa wood. What that's worth in, in strength. The stuff he says is there's nothing to it. But he said that he uses it on uh, on the wing ribs, that geodetic ring ribs. He yeah. puts there and then CAs that down and he says underneath it and he says it doesn't move and it weighs nothing. Yeah, it's uh, some of the high performance sailplanes, the FAI uh, free flights and uh, stuff like that. They have they basically use that to like a cap strip on a rib and stuff like that. And I think they actually use it to sheet the leading edge too. Uh, yeah, although I think they have some kind of a backing underneath it just to help move the shape. But, uh, yeah, this stuff is really, really strong. And uh, He's saying it yeah. doesn't cost that much out of England, wherever it is probably for Europeans and their, uh, and their gliders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think on that. Oh, Dick said that. That's probably Dick right there. Yeah, it is. He's coming. Um, um, Take everybody yeah. Or John in. Is that Dick? No. Nope. Um, oh, that's Tom. Yeah. No picture. That's Dollar hey, there's a picture. How you doing, Tom? You got your mic muted. His name is not Tom, it's Dollar Thirty Eight. Dollar Thirty Eight. Okay. Buck thirty eight. How you doing, Buck? <laughs> No, oh, he's frozen up. I think he's he's having problems. No, he's not. He's just got slow connection. He's freezing. Yeah, he was moving. Lynn Burrell says he's all ready for practice. He's got fourteen gallons of fuel ready to go in a brand new plane. That's fourteen good. gallons. That ought to get you through May. I got enough nitro to make ninety gallons of fuel. But enough oil. I just don't. I got to get cat. I don't have enough caster. 
but I got enough synthetic nitro and what do you keep? What do you keep that much nitro in? A steel drum? Ah, uh, gallon cans. Mm. It's only it's nine gallons. I got nine gallons of it. Do you buy fresh new cans when you do something like that? I get them from I get them every year at Toledo from Clots. They uh, come in a metal can and and I just pick them up and I don't know if it's going to be going on next year. So I bought four gallons this year. I sold one off already, but figure you know when it's hard to get, it'll keep me going for for a while. What is it lasting? Oh God! Did, I, uh... This year was forty-five bucks. It went up fifteen dollars a gallon. So the price of nitro is way up, but. I was only paying thirty dollars for it, so at least six of them are at thirty gallon, thirty dollars, and the new stuff is forty-five a gallon. Can you get that at the drag strip? Yeah, I. But I heard people were paying seventy-five dollars for it there, Mike. What What did you pay for? You got yours at the speed shop for forty-eight. Fifty-two. Fifty-two per gallon. Per yeah. gallon. And Torco used to be $49 on eBay with free shipping until the year before last. So not last summer, but the summer before was $49 with free shipping. Last summer, it went up to $79 with free shipping on eBay from Torco. And I'm buying the same gallon of Torco at my speed shop for $52. So same as a gallon of thinner. Yeah. You know, I don't know why, it, but Clot said it, it just took a huge jump. Well, yeah, there's only one place making it, and that's China. Yeah. Rusty, did Len, is Len getting on tonight, or did he give up? I No, he's apparently going to sit on YouTube tonight. What about it, Len? Are you, any chance you're going to come in live tonight? we got to hear it from the knuckleheads. Who's the Knuckle head? Canadians. Uh, Canadians. Yeah. He lives in Canada. That's what he told me. Yeah. I asked him a little while ago. I forgot where he lived. And and that's, he told me he lived just across the border. He lives at a bean field. Ask him about it. Yeah. I'll ask him about it when he comes in live. Naomi finally got an account on Stud Hanger. Yeah, I've seen that. seen She's putting on something about her airplane and stuff, so that's good. Yeah, it's good to see her there. Those, those two are a lot of fun. The, the, the only trouble with those two at Brodak is that they're just kind of a blur going from one event to the next, but uh, hard to actually sit them down for a minute or two and just chat, but they're always running. So Well, and Len, Len missed last year. He had a heart attack just before Brodak's. Ouch. They Ouch. weren't there then. So, well, that's better than having a heart attack at Brodak. Well, I guess so. But, yeah, I, I'm hoping uh, to see them again. When well, speaking of heart attacks at contests, I wonder how Tom Morris is feeling these days. I have no idea if he's one of our viewers or not. Uh, I talked to him today. Um, he's doing – he seems to be doing okay. He he's doing okay. So. I could tell – you know, after when I saw him pretty soon, I guess within a year after he had that happen to him, uh, uh, and and you could, you know, I, I could see that he had uh, been weakened a little bit. Hopefully, he was making a comeback, strengthening up. I guess he said he's doing pretty good, but he'll never be any stronger than what he is now because it destroyed so much of his heart. But uh, he said, besides that, he's, you know, for what he's got, he's doing he's doing good, and his, his health is doing good. Good. He said uh, he figured, he'll come down to South Carolina for one of these contests. He says he figures if he can make it another 20 years, they'll have new parts for him, so he can have them put in. In 20 years, they could probably grow him a whole new heart. That's what he's saying, all this stuff where they're printing off ears and all that kind of stuff that 
within 20 years, they'll have other, other major parts for your body. I was a similar benefit uh, when I had uh, kidney failure uh, um, back in the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. I came along just in time to get a whole new cutting edge of, of treatments. And um, otherwise, I would have been gone a long time ago. And uh, thank, I'm thankful for that. Now I look at it, if they start printing body parts, there'll be a certain one if someone can print that there'll be a big a big ass demand on that and people will be <laughs> billionaire <laughs> you guys, guys want to see something sexy no we don't want to see about speedo. sex mike <laughs> speedo ain't sexy oh uh, here comes rich hang on let me let rich in he said he was getting ready to come uh, in i'm the only one I'm doing that it. was on um well, that hey rich that yeah, yeah, we're right doing. Doing show and tell now that Japanese yeah. coffee shop they still have cases and um cranks and piston and piston, piston and liner sets they just don't have needle valves I, I couldn't find needle valves on there but they're showing 46 cases again hey uh rich the other yeah. night did I, did I show you how to uh make a picture like what Mike's showing to make it big so you can see it full screen. Yeah, yeah. Click yeah. on the thing. Yeah. Click on his thumbnail. Yeah. Well, it's not stunt. These are all, this is 10 LA-25s for uh, speed limited combat. Oh. All been converted and all the uh, crappy Phillip head screws taken out. I got my RTL fasteners order in. So I got all the metric socket head cap screws and the heads and the back plates and all that. And some of these were RC. Uh, some were eBay. Some were from the forums. Some were from swap meets. But uh, there's like six brand new ones in there and four used ones. Wow. Ready, ready to do battle this summer. All, all for combat on a bladder. Nice. So suck it, stunt guys. <laughs> I have that many super tactics. Do you? Yeah. How many do you need, man? I don't know. As many as I can get. Yeah, well, I figured this is five for Sam and five for me, so that we can each have, we'll have ten airplanes, five apiece with freshy motors, you know. Dennis, nice. I, I guess you remember back in the day when you had 12 airplanes but two motors, right? And then you had You'd take the motor off a crash one and put it on a on a on a new one, right? Yep. I have that many I have that many Merco sixty ones. Wow. You better sell them now while they're still valuable before all the guys that want them are dead, man. Because in twenty years nobody's gonna want any of this stuff anymore. I don't know about that. They're still playing with the ignition engines. Well, that's true. I guess so. Yeah. Just think, any young people playing with ignition engines? Well, yeah, yeah. And Merkos was a good, were good running engines. They run great. They just an ounce heavier, and they bolt right into where a Super Tiger goes. They're just an ounce heavier. That's the only reason why I don't run them. Hey, I got to blast for a minute. Dick, before you do your show and tell, wait till I get back, okay? No, we'll be done by the time you get back, Mike. I got to <laughs> put some balls in the fire and make a cocktail, but I don't want to miss show and tell of Dick's two rooms full of orgasmic control line airplanes. Yeah, we will do. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to step off to the side while this uh, intermission is coming, so I'll be back in a minute if anybody tries to join tell them i'll be back in a, a minute to let them in tell them it'll be here uh, get out of the chair hey sparky did you ever uh have a um oh was that english um mbbs huh mbbs no it was made in england uh irvine irvine yeah that uh, irvine stunt 40 Never had one. I've seen one of them go on eBay for just huge. That went for four hundred and some bucks. 
But it was there. It said right on the thing, Stunt 40. But I didn't know what was so. I heard. I always heard they were a really good motor, but never seen anybody fly one or have one or anything else. Hmm. I had one M MVBS in my life, MVBS 49, and I never flew it. Never ran it. Bought it. Sold it. This got some of them 49 snores, which is a copy of that um, MVBS. That thing runs really good. Oh, yeah, them snorer motors? Yeah. Brodak carried them for a little bit. They carried them in the, what, the 51, the newer one. But something happened to, I've seen the guy who owns the company there at Brodak and Something happened with his, someone stole, broke in and stole his dive or, and he was in court trying to get him back. And it was a big fiasco why they weren't making them anymore. And I never heard any more about it. After running PAs, there is no finer engine than a PA. The only problem is, is the weight. Yeah. They got way more power in a Super Jagger, you know, 60 to 60. But you gotta have all that rigmarole. Three out, three extra ounces. Did you ever have you ever run a Inya sixty? I heard them ran pretty good too. They're heavy too. Ounce, right. ounce heavier than Tiger sixty. The reason why everybody runs run Tiger sixties is because it's it's between a sixty size case and a forty size case. So. Uh, in between, so that's why they ran. These are about as light as you're going to get 12 and a half ounces for 60. And that's what the muffler and everything on them, or yeah, well, 13 ounces with the muffler, a tongue muffler. What What is the PA 75 way? 13 and a half without a header or a muffler. I'll go wait. I in your 60, and I thought that my uh, um, Rojet 76 only weighed like 12 and a half ounces. Maybe. I can go weigh it once. This is, the, this is the lightest muffler you can get for the PA. This is that Kaz Monado 10 million yen carbon muffler. <laughs> well, that number gets higher every time you say it, Sparky. <laughs> well, Tanks and muffs are different prices. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> this is a piece of engineering. You could tell this guy worked at Honda. I mean, this is beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. Wave. There you go. Oh, hey, Emma. Nice to see you. What? Nothing? Nice to see you too. Loudly. Nice, nice to see, to see you too. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you fart knocker. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. We're ready for show and tell anytime. Yeah, show and tell time. Hold on. Uh, let me, I'm going to click the present to all so everybody will be focused on Rich. And there we go. You got the, you got the floor, Rich. Hang on. I'm heading towards the, the other. Okay, I got to figure this out. Don't fall down and break your hip, man. Yeah, I don't get tangled oh, up in your cord. Hey, Mike, did you get a napkin? A napkin? To wipe all the drool off your face as you're watching this. Oh, yeah. I, want, I got some right here, man. Okay, cool. I got mine. I got mine. Yeah, Sparky, we know what you're using that for, man. Don't lie. <laughs> Oh man, it starts in the hallway. Down the hallway here. Down the long hallway. Joe, kind of, 
Oh, my oh God. yeah. Okay. All right, that's that's the first bet. That's the one he just started filling. Is that a Harry? There's the katana. Oh, there's that katana you want. T Rex. Yeah. Katana T Rex. Gladiator in the back. Yeah, there's the gladiator. And this one. A score. Strega? Strega, that's got an FA 72 in it. I got to figure out what color to paint the dumb thing. I see a pulse jet box on that desk back there in the corner, man. <laughs> a what? I see it. I see it. A pulse jet. <laughs> the Hobby King pulse jet box. I can yeah, see there's it. one there, yeah. And then the, there's kits laying everywhere. Was that airplane Randy Ryan's, that red one with the white stripes on it? Yep, that was his. Yeah, he did a real nice refinish thread. In, uh, oh, there you go. Oh, my goodness. How many airplanes can you fly at once? <laughs> I usually take three or four to the field with me. Hey, uh, I like the bumblebee, man. Hey, Dick, show him that. That has a carbon fiber uh, tail on it. Or it's pretty cool how Dick made that. Didn't get a close up of that thing. It's a square carbon fiber tube. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's one, it's one inch square carbin fiber. Cool. And it, well, that goes all the way up through the wing and stuff. That thing really flies good. Now that tail does not wiggle. I'll bet. Well, there's all of our oh his race and stuff and yeah, I see the racing stuff there. Like turkeys, yeah, and speed stuff. Yeah, there's three Fox 35 speed planes. The yellow one, that's a Fox 35 stunt, but everything inside of its Fox is K and B 40. Piston liner, crank, everything internal is a K and B 40. <laughs> You're giving yourself up. <laughs> well, that was supposed to be for that. They were. They were doing that in uh, Missouri there and stuff where they were racing uh, racing them Fox 35s in speed. They did it at the Nats one year, too. Seeing us carrier planes, a bunch of combat stuff. There's a couple of Foxburg racers back there. There's a twin with ASB 15s on it. There's stuff. And they all got motors. Yeah. Everything's got motors. Yeah. And there's guns every damn. There's guns every place. I like that. Nothing yeah, wrong with that. Rifles and... What is that? What is that? A 30? Is it a 30 cal you got as a air rifle, Dick? A what? Was it a 30 caliber air rifle? I am up to 50 caliber. Oh, maybe was it that 50 caliber we shot in your yard? That <laughs> sounds like a real rifle going off. I'm like, holy shit. A 50 caliber air rifle, really? Yeah. You can't believe <laughs> He's known all over the United States for machining and working on these air rifles. I'm a gunsmith too. Yeah. Is it a pump or does it shoot off of a canister? 3,500 pounds of air. Yeah, so okay. from what kind of source? You you pump it up or uh, you with use an AC, it? With a uh, uh, SCBA tank. 4,500 backpack tank. I got a couple of them. Oh, uh, okay. One of the guys we fly with has a compressor. Yeah. Go over to his house and fill it up or the scuba shop. Yeah, you know, as crazy as this guy has just got into control line. He was into uh, air rifles. He got tired of going to fill up his uh, his tanks at the scuba shop, so he bought his own compressor. And Dick, I couldn't believe what he paid for a compressor. Dick can tell you in a minute. Well, it was crazy just for how often you got to fill up a compressor. How much did that compressor cost that he bought? Four thousand. 
four thousand dollars to fill up his air rifle. Well, yeah, yeah Michael, that's what you Michael like. For, yes, that's what you got to do for HP Air, yeah. though, man. You got to have it. Here's a yeah, nice, little, here's a nice little toy, air. Mike. A little higher. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I like it. This is two thousand dollars worth of air gun. Yeah, made in Russia. It'll shoot one MOA, twenty caliber. No kidding. I got. Well, I had four of them. I got two left. I sold two of Does them. Does it shoot out of a magazine or is it just a single, no. single load? Single shot. Yeah, all air rifles are single shot. Are they? Yeah. Well, now yeah. they make them where they got magazines, but. But yeah. Are you doing a lot any of the HP stuff? Is a is a it's a breech loader or a bolt action single shot? Yeah, these are Russian made. They got match grade Lothar Waffler barrels in them. They'll shoot one inch groups at hundred yards. What were you importing the things? You got four of them. Were you an importer or something? No, I just collected them. <laughs> You're colluding, man. <laughs> what I must you have. You I don't know. Probably. There's a closet in that in that second, the little bedroom with all the planes in it. There's about uh, 15 air rifles in there. Do you live in Detroit? Grand Rapids, middle of Michigan. Yeah. He just lives. He's right here, miles. Sparky. Yeah. Basically, I live on Nine Mile Road and Steve lives on 19 Mile. Yeah. Yeah, we live right by each other. Are you doing are you doing any of the machining this year before flying season again or not? Yeah, I did one gun last week for a guy, but what he okay. does he takes about six weeks, right right about now when it gets a little bit warmer and he works in his, his shop and stuff, and he can knock out enough work to pay for all of his flying. For the what do you are you his cheerleader or something, man? Go over there and see him do all this shit all the time. <laughs> you I wish, like his cheerleader, man. Like, I wish that I could. Uh, I wish I could do machining and stuff like that to where I could pay for all of my flying for in six weeks for the whole year of all the yeah, that would be pretty everything awesome. I wanted to do. Hey, uh, Dick, no dice on the uh, Dynajet tailpipes. I called Mike Hazel uh day before yesterday. He had, he'd already sold them. So He sold them off? That's a shame. Yeah, we're not getting them. He had he had a dozen, so enough to make six complete tailpipes, but somebody somebody beat me to it. So, oh, well. Yeah, because I found out yesterday it'd be about 20 minutes worth of welding on, on that kind of stuff, so I was trying to figure out what it would cost to get them welded off. I should have bought them when he first had them listed, like because they were on there for like, over three months. They were there forever. What are they made of? Stainless? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, stainless. Yeah. <clears throat> but no dice, they're gone. So doesn't they matter. They're gone. Thirty-eight. You made it in. Yeah, hey, Tom, what you uh, up to or but? No, oh, I just did a little clear coating. Why is he buck thirty eight? What's that about? Buck sixty eight. That's how much he paid to paint his airplane. Oh, okay. Dollar fifty? Yeah, that's that's the that's the color. That's paint that, that's how much for the color. A lot of money, you know. Buck and a half. It's ready to fly. Well good. So hey, what's your what's your weather right? like? Oh, it's uh, it was it's been wet and cold the last couple of days. Now the sun was out, got up to seventy degrees, but the wind's like forty. <laughs> yeah, just just wind, just just beat you to death. So I'm ready to start flying for the year, and I'm just sitting here waiting for the weather. Come on, global warming. Yeah. yeah, it is the global warming. It's doing all this. I didn't believe my brother. He kept on all this shit was going to happen. The global warming. I'm like, yeah, but fuck, ain't no such thing. And, all right. Well, can and we talk about airplanes? That so far has happened except for Michigan to go into a drought. 
And if that happens, we start getting, then he'll be right on everything about temperature and winds. And he went through this whole big deal and wrote it down. He said, Do you just watch? Here's what's going to happen. As he explained the Dust Bowl, it was, it was hotter then than it is now. The dust, the dust Bowl out west? Yeah. That was due to bad farming. And that was due to bad weather, drought. It's cyclical. There is no such thing as man-made global warming. It's cyclical. We're in a con constant state. We've been in an ice age. You're a refrigerator guy. What is the refrigerator on the top when all the ice is gone? Well, all the ice is not gone yet. So we're not out of the ice age yet. Well, there used to be ice way down into Ohio and stuff like that, but that part's gone. Right, we're not out of the ice age yet. All the ice isn't melted. I don't think all the ice will ever be melted. Would anybody like to see some airplanes and talk about freaking airplanes? I would. Yeah. yeah. Freaking global warming and the weather, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Yeah. What'd you buy now? Hope he's gone. Oh man. Pissed him off. Yeah, no, the government booted him for uh not not believing in not wanting to talk about global warming. They just kicked him right off the internet. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. They talked to uh talked to Jeff Trax Traxler today, wished him a happy birthday. Yeah, I talked to him a couple of days. I talked to him on it. No, I talked to him the day before his birthday. I didn't oh, know he was birthday tracks. When was his I birthday? Didn't know, I didn't know he was in bad shape. Oh, yeah, real bad. Yeah. Doggone it. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah. Talking about fusing his neck, and then he won't be able to fly at all if they fuse his neck, I guess. Yeah, right now he's they've got an epidural uh, blocking it. At least yeah. he's got relief from some pain. But. Yeah, whatever that disease he's got is pretty pretty bad. Oh, this is this is from his accident. Oh, this is from that car accident. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The doctors told him then that uh, it's just a matter of time. You're going to have some vertebrae problems. So that's what he's got. Well, I know before um, the accident, he owned a couple businesses and had a couple full-size airplanes he flew and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, he lost it all because of that accident. Yeah, and everything. Well, I gotta get something to eat. I'll see you guys later. Okay, take it easy, Sparky. We'll see you. All righty. Boy, have a good weekend. Late night eating. Yeah. Have a good weekend, Sparky. Later. See ya. Yeah, I finally broke down and ordered uh, flat horns and stuff for that vector since I cannot find them in this house. I had to throw them away as the only thing I can think of. But don't you make yours? No. Oh. Well, this was an ARF kit, and it came with them. Oh. And uh only thing I can think of is that when them kits come from China, they're all in plastic, stuff's in all them plastic bags, and they got tape, bags are taped together. And when I took the wing out or the fuselage out or something, the bag with the horns and stuff was stuck on the wing bag or the fuselage bag or whatever, and I just crumbled it all up and threw it in the trash. Because I got everything else but that. Wow. So the hinge, and I remember the hinges and the uh, there's a couple little screws and uh, for the landing gear, and then your the horns and the uh, tail wheel, and all that's gone. So, did you talk to our friends in Carmichael's about that? What's that? Did you talk to our friends in Carmichael's? Yeah, I just. They got, I had to order some other stuff. They threw the bell crank. I said, I'll, you know, I got wheels and tail yeah. wheels, that kind of stuff and screws for it. But yeah, I was just they might have had a hardware bag 
you know, from a, a sometimes they have to part out kits and stuff like that. They might have a hardware bag that they, they could have sent you. Yeah, she didn't have one, so it's like not yeah. a big deal. So if somebody else must have did the same thing, or more than likely they probably sent the hardware bag when somebody then when they parted out for the wing or something. Mm. You know, send them the whole bag or however they do yeah. it. Yeah, that's true too. Those are all Brodac horns in there, so they should have been able to supply something off the shelf too. Yeah, yeah. she did. So she just sent it to me, but I had to order all this stuff, so she took it over to the hobby shop and yeah so have it but yeah I, I know it was there well i'm pretty sure it was there my memory's like i know it was there but you know that could just be in my head and it really was never there but i, I have a feeling mm -hmm. it was. but yeah so it's been shipped hopefully i get it tomorrow and i can finish what, what are you talking about what were you missing parts for for uh, uh for my little vector uh -huh. Electric, yeah. Um, the um, elevator and flap horns, I can't find. I've been, I tore this house apart. I looked every place, they should just be downstairs. I thought everything was in that box. I took everything out and inspected it or whatever, threw away all the plastic stuff, all the packaging. And when I got in, and I took out the fuselage and the wing and stuff, and I went to put the flaps on and I got no flap horn on. Uh, you got so, no wreckage you can uh, salvage some from? No, not that. I have other ones, but they don't fit. You know, so this one's a three inch spread and I had them at three and a half and stuff like that, but I didn't have any three inch, so. Yeah. But, oh well. But it is what it is, and I should have had extra, but I don't know what the hell I did. Because I had an extra elevator one from a kit that we put in Tom Morris stuff in. So I should have had the uh, flap horn, but I can't find it either. But I got all the electronics. I didn't do a show and tell, but you can't see nothing. But anybody that's done one, had to try to tuck all that stuff in there. I don't know if you, if you can look down in below all that. See, you got it all down below the battery tray. Good work. Yeah, they all got to go through that that center hole to get everything in there. Mm -hmm. I got the, the charging or the arming plug in and and all that. Yeah. The motors all in and the wires are all ran down and so. I finally figured out how to get all that in there on this what one. Is it? What, what plane is that? Vector 40. Oh, Vector 40. Okay. Yeah. They're a sweet airplane. Yep. But yeah, Dennis designed that battery box and everything. and It works fantastic. It's just you got to get some hemostats and stuff like that when you get all that stuff in there and work it all through and You'd think there's not enough room for it, but there actually mm -hmm. is. Once you get it all in there, it's all fine. And yeah, but it's just trying to get the wires in there, and and then get the wires hooked up to the motor. And I found out that to do it, I had to. I had all the motor in and everything. I had to take the motor out, pull the motor back, so I can pull the wires longer, hook them all up, and push everything back up in there. But yeah, so. Yeah, well, they're now, all so. I can say, it, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but you know, when you got something like the the top side battery hatch, you know, the top the top block is removable, and it takes a lot of structural integrity out of the airplane. So, uh, my I, my feeling on that for both that and the SV11 was, well, let's build it without a cowl down below, and then we'll maintain the you know the the structure by having it nice and boxed in on the bottom and stuff, no removable cowl, and, you know. In fact, it'll be all on top. And yeah, you're right. There's looks like there's room for everything in there, and you can get it all in there. But it's not. Uh, luckily, it's not something you go put in and take out every other week or anything like that. Oh yeah. It's kind of luck. It's a lifetime installation. Yeah, but, I was gonna cut the bottom of it open, 
and do that. But I got looking at it and I seen that you had structural stuff and I'm like, yeah, I better not cut that bottom. It's probably a reason yeah. why there's not a hatch on the bottom of this. Mm. So, but I got it all in. It just, <coughs> it just takes a bit. Yeah. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're super light. And they fly great. Mm -hmm. But this is the third one. First one went in at the Nats. And that was that prototype. Then I got another one that Samantha flies, and I don't let other people fly it, but uh, that thing is great. And then uh, I got this one here, so. Okay. I guess I didn't know she was even flying the second one. I thought after she broke the first one, uh, she had she was pretty much into her uh, world champ airplanes. After that, some of the bigger stuff and whatever. So no, we uh, we threw that together. I got that um, in December of last year. No, not not last December. The year before that, 2017. And we got it the day before we left for Florida. So we packed it in the truck and I built that down in Florida. And then we mm -hmm. flew to Florida and then we took it to uh, North Carolina and flew it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got back and then she got her, her world championship airplane done. And then mm -hmm. we flew that, but yeah, she, she flown. She flew that vector this year. But didn't she go to the dentist? Yeah, she's sleeping right now. She got. Uh, she's not feeling too good by what I what I read. Yeah, she got dry sockets. Oh man. Yeah. So. Yeah, she was. She never went to sleep. I was up with her all night, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday night. Um, she got zero sleep. And then she made it through Thursday. No. She went in today. Or she went in yesterday. It, we're up all night, and I told her to call the dentist. And I told her that Tuesday, and she called and got got a uh, voicemail or whatever, and she didn't leave a message, and then she was in all that pain. I said, you better call them. So they got her in, and sure shit, she had dry socket, and I told her, I said, this ain't getting better if you got dry socket. And, uh, man. So we stuffed something in there. She went back today. They pulled whatever they pull out of there and put another one in. Um, they didn't do nothing with the right one because it wasn't that bad and it looked like it was healing. They, I don't know, they put some antibiotics or whatever down in there or something. But she's still in a lot of pain and they gave her three pain pills. And that was it. When they were gone, there weren't no more. But so she's just got to deal with the pain now. Yeah, they're uh, pretty, pretty tight on giving out pain medicine anymore is so such a witch hunt about the uh, opioid epidemic as they call it but uh and what was crazy? You know, there's a reason there's a reason for that stuff to exist and the people that really need it are suffering so because of the people that are using it improperly so i go down there and i give them the prescription and i come back later and i get it it was free through the pharmacy. They didn't even charge for it. I'm like, well, no, I'm like, no wonder these people got hooked on opioids if they give them for free. <laughs> you know, yeah. one of the things on the Walmart and Myers free list was these. Uh, oh, I can't think of which one she got now, but uh, they're yeah. all similar. So, yeah. Tom, what you building right now? You got any new projects on the table? Yeah, I'm going to start a SB11. Wow. I got, in fact, I've got a SB11 uh, uh, ARF that uh, the fuselage has been smashed. 
on the apps in the mid section of the fuselage, mid to app section. I don't know what happened to it, but it's smashed. So, so you're just going to build a few slides for it then? Yep. Take all the coverings off, get into the bell crank area, redo all that. It's, it's for my flying buddy. He's, he's so busy, he doesn't even have time to build or get an airplane or nothing. So I'm going to help him out and get something going for him. Well, you got an SV-11 plan that you can... Yep. Build a few yep. slides. Yeah, I've got uh, SV-11 lost phone. Pardon? I said SV-11 seems to be a popular build lately. I've heard a lot of people building them. Yep. I still got my I still got my hot rod plane. You know, I've been I haven't worked on it too much, but you know that that uh, form uh, buck fuselage that I started. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing now, doing them two projects. And these, uh, this other one here, uh, I had to kind of do a little bit of rework. And I, I found the name of this plane here. You know, I name all my planes. Yeah. yeah. It bastard because it shoved the wire through my thumb. Oh, yeah, I remember this that. This one here, I'm calling it Never Ending. Never Ending? Never Ending. Have you flown that one yet? No, no. Have you guys seen this up close? I don't know. I think it turned out all right. Lynn Burrell says he's building an SV-11 R assembling, I guess. That way. Yeah, let me let me click on you there. Okay, gotcha. Here's the top. That looks nice. Well, let me see that tank mount. How do you got that tank mounted again? Did you buy that tank with a back plate on it like that, or did you? No, uh, I, I, I do all my tanks that way. I just silicone the tank to the to the plywood. Uh, it's plywood, and then uh, right behind that bolt. Oh, that's plywood. Brass, I thought it was aluminum. Yeah, stick in a brass insert. You know, and it's slotted so I can move the tank up and down. Yeah. Now this this engine here I had on that Bion Brian uh Bion Barker, it was too light. So when I did my my center of gravity, my Vanessa mm -hmm. gravity machine, mm -hmm. uh, that engine there that I have on there made it balance out perfect. Well, let me ask you about that tank. Um that's what I've got on my twister. It, it came, I think it came with the twister kit or either that or Wayne bought it because Wayne gave me that kit. And um, it uh, has all of the tubes on the outside so that you can make a cowl or, or a, a, you know, a cheek block and insert that into it so that it's sunken and, and, and there's no tubes near the back to interfere with it. But I've never been able to find another one. I wanted one that held another ounce, but where did you, where did you make that tank or? Uh, no, I, I got this from uh, Eric Rule. Oh, this is, uh, this is a tank. This is what he called for a profile. Yeah. A profile fuselage because it sets right behind the engine. And if you look there, there's a, not a very big gap. Right. In there. So Eric made these two beams towards the back and I love it because it's great for profile. That is, yeah, I want to be able, I want to get a couple of tanks like that because uh, I like to put cheek blocks on the inboard, I mean on the outboard. Yeah, just, uh, just, just when you get your tanks, you should do this every tank you get. You need to, you need to uh, pressure check them. I always do, this, yeah. This tank, this tank here had four, had four leaks in it. Yeah, they it's, it's not unusual for brand new tanks to blow bubbles when you put them underwater. So let's give you all the problems on this thing, Tom. What? What gave you all the problems on it? That oh, just uh, uh, the finishing process. You know, it's it was just for some reason. It was just real cantankerous. You know, it was always there was. 
some little detail that I didn't like and have to redo and just have to redo and redo and redo until I'm I'm just yep, I just named it never ending. <laughs> Pain on that one too? Huh? Is that Walmart paint on that one also? Yep. Yep. That looks paint. great. So how much how much money you got into that one for paint? Altogether, I've got sixteen dollars in it. Okay. Don't count the engine and don't count the fuel tank. But uh, everything else, yep. That's it. I like, the, I like the treads on your wheels too. I've not, I hadn't seen wheels oh, like uh, that. I got that at, uh, I got that at uh, at a swap meet. I picked up both of these pair. They're brand new in the package. I, I paid, uh, I paid a dollar fifty for them. Yeah, I like that. So you bought all the balsa wood and everything, and you only got sixteen dollars in it. No, the the kit. I won the kit at uh, oh at uh, the Nats in uh, 2016 oh, okay and i started building this in december 2017 and then last year you know with my dad and everything so i decided well i need to get this finished Does that I, have did, I did Does something new this year and i really like it i think i'm gonna do that from now on is that one of the brodac kits does that have dihedral in it no dihedral. Oh, the uh, brass terminations. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. I made my I made myself a tool to uh, bend that brass tubing like that. I've done that on a couple of half a planes. I like yeah. it. Like, I like that too. Yeah, I, I could never buy the eyelets. I could never I could never find them. Well, here's the. Here's, I don't know if you've seen my exhaust, Steve. Oh, yeah. You made that out of a chunk of balsa wood. And uh, on the back side, you can see the back side of it. All oh, right. Panel lines on it. And yeah. Uh, I still, every airplane, I get a little better and I learn, I keep learning. There's a what did it come up for weight? Uh, the weight is uh 41.9. Wow, that's really good. I tell you, you really save a lot of weight with that damn paint from Walmart. Well, my uh, I've got uh, um, three. Wow, three that's really good. I tell you, you really save a lot of weight with that damn paint from Walmart. Oh man, that's my uh, I've got uh, um. It's super light. Oh, that's really good. I kind of see a lot of weight with that damn paint from Walmart. Oh, man, that's really, uh, I've got, uh, it's got something going on. Yeah, what? I think it's. Somebody's got YouTube open in the background. Yeah, Rick is the only one I see that has the little green lights. But uh, oh, oh, he uh, gone. Hope he'll come back in. Yeah, I don't know what. It, yeah, Rich, something must have happened with us. You, you, oh, well, you, know you know how much my color weighs, Steve? How much? One point five. Holy cow! That and then just your clear on top of that. No, no clear on top. Oh, after okay. I got the after I got the clear done and everything, I'm setting at five five. Five five for yeah. Eight. But I haven't I haven't weighed it for about I haven't weighed it for just a little over a week, so it's probably a little less less now because it's it's just been gassing off crazy. So I took it out in the sunlight for a while. So basically, you had four ounces of clear then. Yeah. Okay. I don't know is is that proper i'm not you know that's what i was asking how much all this stuff weighs you know everybody's like oh they can you know an eight ounce paint job and it's like look i don't see how they do it i mean the the I, only thing is with this craft paint is uh is uh is after you spray it you don't want to you really don't want to really touch it 
You, you need to lock it down with clear. Oh, okay. Lock her down. As soon as you get your color on, your base color, uh, I shoot a I sh shoot a coat of clear. And then you can then you can start putting your maskings on without without it pulling off the surface. Oh. Now I've got it down to where I don't have to use the clear and I could do my masking and pull the tape off. But this this one here, I had little spots where you know it it didn't pull a lot of paint off but it pulled a speck off you oh, know and i just that's why i always had i just had to keep redoing it i'd really like to have the dope to tell you the truth but you know yeah I, the, uh, the paint is clear at first then when it if it pulls a little bit of the clear off i guess you can't really see it well if you if you clear it you can mask tape i can leave tape on it and come back and it never i never have an issue uh but it's just it's been a learning curve for me here you know i mean trying mm -hmm. to this is only my fourth airplane yeah yeah the first, air, first airplane it turned out real heavy you know are you, are you uh using an airbrush to spray it on I use uh, uh, I use uh, that one. And oh yeah, big ones. That oh. one and that one there, and then I got that one there. Okay, Rich is back. I got a question, so I need to answer. I need to answer right. about the clear coat coming out of that gun. I, I noticed on this one in my last plane coming out of my gun, there is uh, like the, the, the clear coat is drying. And it's like it shoots out little little specks of, of clear coat that's, that's drying, that's dried, coming out of the sprayer. What am I doing wrong? Uh, maybe you're thinning it too much. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. That or put a little bit of reducer in it. Or what's that? What's pressure? Pressure? I don't even know. Pressure I've been bit. experimenting with pressures too, you know. That's what I was going to say. Raise the pressure a little bit so it gets there so it gets there faster. Okay, what what what, what are you talking about? Pressure. Pressure to the to the uh spray gun. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've been experimenting like from 30 to 55 pounds into my gun. I think I'm better if you get too high, though. That's the only thing. I'm spraying at about 20, I think. 20? Yeah. It depends on the gun. Yeah, I noticed that. Well, yeah, that purple one, I got the same guns, and that's about what I spray at. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to see if you can see this. This is the spec I'm talking about. Yeah, I say it's a little, just three, three of them. Oh, it's a bunch of them. Little white specks. I do, yeah. What? That's that's the clear coat coming out of my gun. Now my gun's clean, man. I mean, my gun's super clean, but I just don't understand what's causing it. I know, I know this. I know in my paint room, I try to keep my. Uh, it's a lot better for me to paint if my if my temp, my surface temperature is uh, is between sixty six and seventy. You may want to. I can get up to seventy four in here, and it paints okay. But anything above that, when that's the the hotter it gets, the worse it, it won't even. This my my craft paint won't stick to the surface of my plane. When I spray rattlesnake paint, I usually warm the paint up until the can's hot. But I don't know if that applies to airbrushing or not. Hmm. Somebody's trying to screen share. Oh, that's Rich. Dick trying yeah. to get back in. Um, Tom, you may want to filter your uh, 
you're clear. You mean uh, uh, when I mix it up, I have a I have a funnel that I filter that I filter it into. I did have one time some some dope that had like globs in it, like it's it went bad, and I ended up having to. I took a a cone and then some paper towel. It took forever, but I uh, I got it all. I th I ended up thinning it and then dumping it down through there. And once I'd filtered it with that, you could see these little teeny globs. And I don't know what if it was clear going bad. What caused the globs in in the dump? And maybe you got a bad batch. It's well, worth it's, trying. Uh, it's I've been uh, it, I bought a. A, a guy give it to me and give me a whole gallon of non tontening Randolph clear dough butyrate. And that's what I've been using for my clear coat. I mean, I, I'm glad. I mean, you, you know, I, I'm type guy. I don't like my plane all nasty. Every time I fly, I wipe it down. You know, I wipe all the oil off. But I could leave oil on it, you know, and wipe it down later. It don't my my paint job never ever gets tacky or sticky, so I'm doing okay there, you know, for as a fuel proof. But even even raw fuel, you know, I'm real careful. I I don't just my fuel, you know, when it overflows, it's completely away from the plane. I don't get any on the plane. Yeah. I like to put urethane up front where it might get fuel spilled on it. Now the front of this, the front of this whole nose here, I got it fiberglass. I put half ounce fiberglass on it. Oh, uh, that well, yeah. Put yeah. it on with like finishing resin. Yep, yep. Use epoxy. That's yeah. In fact, that I'm uh, prepared to do that uh, uh, on my next bills too. Is uh, I've bought plenty of fiberglass and uh, lifetime supply of finishing resin. Yeah. My cheek, my cheek cow. You see, I pick it up from the front there. When I hollered my cheek cow out, I kept holding it up to the light, you know. I could see through it, then I'd quit. So yeah, I had the whole thing where I could see through it. So it's really it's really thin, but what kind of finishing resin did you get, Rusty? Bob Smith. Oh, okay. The the epoxy finishing resin. Right. Oh, okay. How's it saying? Uh I haven't used it yet, but uh I uh, think, well, no, I was about to say, I think I saw Sparky use it. But he had something else. I don't know. I'll have to report back on that. Yeah. Well, the best. It sands better. But. It is. Better than z -poxy. And you, well, you put it on is. extremely thin. What are you, which kind are you talking about, Steve? The laminating. What's the it called? 20 minute laminating epoxy. 20 minute laminated pot. What, it sands real easy? Oh, yeah. The Bob Smith I bought is 20 minute. Yeah, that's it. It. The only thing that sands better than that is SIG polyester finishing resin. But. Okay, I'm on Google now. What's the name of it? Bob Smith. No, the, the is that is that the one that sands easy? Yeah. Oh, Bob Smith. I thought you said another name. No. Yeah, it's, well, mine's relabeled to the hobby shop name, but that's what BSI does. If you buy Brodak stuff, that's Bob Smith. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah or BSI. Yeah. Well, I'll look for that. I got it already saved. I buy it. I'm an I'm an Amazon freak. Okay, because I I don't know what they sell it for there, but the real good price is from uh, Hobby King. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to think, it, but it's the only maybe it's, they sell that now in like uh, four ounce bottles. Hobby King does great big bottles, and it's not that much more than a. A two ounce bottle. Two that's ounce. what I bought. I got those big bottles. I would have oh, gotten smaller if they had them, but that's all I had. Oh, yeah. I mean, price wise, you get twice as much for 25% more money. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I also got my, uh, I got this done tonight, finally. See the Stuka? Oh, yeah. That we were talking right. about that Stuka one night when you weren't on here. I think Dennis uh, brought up the split, uh, the double hinged flaps. The what? The double hinged flaps. Mine? My P40? No, your Stuka. Doesn't it have the double hinge flaps, or was that the P40? No, that's that's the P40. Uh, Dennis Dennis saw that there with Wesley Dick at the museum that day. Have you flown? Uh, did, you ever, did you ever fly? Uh, I guess I never heard. Uh, you flew it? How you like that? On the, the P40. Did you ever fly that? Uh, yes. And? Yeah. Well, uh, I have a weight issue. That was my first airplane when I finished it. And uh, the finish weight is just off the chart. So uh, what I did was uh, two years ago, I rebuilt the nose of it. And I, I put a four stroke on it. And, uh, and I flew it the first time with the four stroke last year and I only flew it twice and I need to trim it because the guys were telling, I, I had an 11.5 on this four stroke. It's a 52 OS. And uh, I've never, I don't know much about a four stroke. So this, um, this is a learning curve for me. And there, all the guys were saying, man, you need to get a, a 12 inch prop. That's a what I was five or six. Eleven five sounds awfully small for a fifty-two. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I put the twelve six on it, and what it did was, oh, it's got plenty of power, but now the plane is flying too fast. Mm -hmm. I I had it down to about oh four nine five sometimes, and uh, now it's like four two four three. Yeah, it's. Uh, and I went, I went from 11.5 to a 12.6. What length lines are you got? You can't have, the RPM down six, on it? 62. Uh -huh. you the RPM down on it, Tom? Well, I can't remember what I was running, what the RPM was that I was running. I can't remember. I got my, I got a tack, but right. uh, I, well, I just I want to know everything. You know, just try a lower pitch. The engine's running happy and everything like that. A lower pitch. Almost. Because yeah. the plane flew a lot better at a slower speed than it does a higher speed. Yeah. So if I could correct that, yeah, it's, it's great. But I tell you what, when you want to snap that baby, boy, does it snap around the curves. Wow. That sounds promising if you can get the speed right i agree with the lower pitch and uh so uh you might want to um shorten your lines and you, know, you gotta only get a tenth of a second per foot i think yeah but you could get some that way but i'm thinking you should only be running around seven thousand some rpm 74 75 with that <laughs> no probably more than that that's did you say 52 with this yeah, generation Steve. I think the later generation four strokes run uh, more normal RPM range. I don't think they they really log down like they used to. Down like they used to. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, probably happier in the 9500 range or something. Yeah, I have no experience with four strokes. But I am going to uh, an an event, my first event this year, to Polk City, and uh, there's a guy there who's an expert. And uh, he's from Minnesota, and uh, he he has four strokes, and he's got a four stroke profile, and uh, that's what made me decide to get a four stroke for my P40. So we when got I a get new there, editor right now, excuse me for interrupting. This oh, is sorry. Mark. Hey, Mark, you got your uh, microphone muted. If you'll click that on, then you can talk to us. Sorry to interrupt, but that's uh, okay. So anyway, I'll be able to. Hey Mark, how you doing? Is it on? Have I clicked it on, Wesley? All right. 
Glad to have you. How are you doing, boy? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we're just talking about uh, paint. We're, we're on painting and finishing. Now we're talking about Tom's uh, P40 that he's four stroking with. You might a little bit too slow. Get on Stunt Hanger on the four stroke and ask him what RPM range and what prop he should be running on. Now, this this guy that I'll be seeing June first. Uh, June first. Uh, he he'll he'll set me right up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he'll, like plan. he'll he'll help me out, and it'll be right there. You know, I've got I'll be bringing several different kind of props. You know, and I'll let him uh, I'll let him uh, kind of take a hold and yeah, testing and tuning. Yep, yep. Even though it's a flying event, you know, it's a Pampa, you know, a, a deal. So it's it's a you know it's a bona fide event. There's still room in there to, to have some fun, you know. Yeah. Usually it's usually it's Saturday morning. Like we're supposed to get started like nine o'clock. It's usually about ten. <laughs> Are you saying it's in Minnesota? He's from Minnesota. Yeah. I was gonna say, will the snow be gone by then in Minnesota? Well, no. The Polk City is in Iowa. Oh, okay. He, he comes down to Polk City every year. He has been for decades, ever since the first one, I guess. Yeah, usually uh, 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 Shrug goes to it. Uh, 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 Brook Brooks, I've seen he goes to it every year. Um, also uh, Wayne Willie, he's there. He man, he's a heck of a builder. He brings his planes and shows them out. Boy, he's a good builder. I know the name from Stunt Hanger, but I've never met him. Yep. Yep. Well, uh, hey, Mark, welcome. This is your first visit with us, isn't it? It absolutely is, Rusty. Thank you very much. Where are you from, Mark? Uh, Wales. Uh, I'm from the UK, uh, but I'm oh. well. I'm from Wales. What's your... Uh, What's your uh, uh, what's your control line favorite? Are you a, a aerobatics flyer or speed combat or what? What do you like to do? F two B, F two B flyer. Okay, that's what most of us are. Yes. Um, some nights, some nights we get a bunch of combat people going, and so we we got something different every night. Oh, good. Well, I've been meaning to give it a try for some time. To, to, there's some interesting topics on here. Uh, but for me to get on, I need to be waking up about half past two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, you're about six hours or so, so behind us, I think. Up at the moment. <laughs> and if I speak any loud, everybody will be waking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, glad you could make it. Six, yeah. It's six welcome. Morning, isn't it? You want to say it? It's about six o'clock in the morning right there. Uh, it's five o'clock now, actually. Oh, oh, that's right. We went. Yeah, we do that uh, um, daylight savings time. Yeah, yeah, that gives us an extra hour. Yeah. So, I, I, um, I, I saw your daughter uh, in in the world, Steve. Uh, she done, she done quite well. Oh, did, oh, did you did you go to France for that or? Yeah, I was on the team in France. Oh, okay. Uh, me, uh, Glenn Allison, and Barry Robinson. It was my first time in the world. Uh, I've done one. I've been out. I've been out of uh, control line flyer for about thirty six, about thirty six years now. And in two thousand and sixteen, I decided to come back after switching to RC, um, and uh, I managed to make the team. Um, and we went to Hungary, and then the second year was the Worlds. Oh, so okay. this year. I managed to make the team again, so it's Bulgaria for the Euro. So I'm looking forward to it, actually. Well, good. I knew you looked familiar. That's why I asked you where you were from. <laughs> You're from Wales, and it's like, well, I haven't been to Wales, so <laughs> thinking about the World Championships. Yeah, it, 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 I'm not Welsh speaking, but uh, I got a Welsh accent, so sometimes if you speak fast, it's hard to pick up about it. 
So I it'll, it'll take me a little while to pick up on your accent so I can follow whatever, what you're saying, but that's how it is. Anytime, you know, somebody from another, uh, uh, another country joins us, I have to get used to get used to following the conversation. I was, I was interested in a couple of, um, stunt hangers ago. Um, I listened to, um, uh, Bob Hunt on controls because over the winter, uh, I was experimenting with one of my, uh, older, older planes, uh, which I had a Barry Robertson, a Diego Red. Um, uh, and I wanted, um, I want them to try faster controls. So what I want them to try is faster controls. So I done the bell crack modification um, and um, loaded a little bit more uh, nose weight on the plane. And the idea was the faster controls, the nose weight would stabilize it to a lot better coming out the corner. And it went quite well. I mean, we should be flying it because next week is the first bomber. Uh, but the problem I was having is bobbling coming out in the corners, which I, I, I don't usually have, to be honest. Not as bad as that, anyway. Um, and the only thing I hadn't changed was I was flying more tail heavy last year, and I had a longer overhang. Um, so, um, I've now got a shorter overhang and reduced the line space, and it seems to be okay. Um, and I was thinking, have I gone down the right route? And then Bob Hunt was talking about it um, a couple of shows ago. So I thought, oh, well, hang on. You know, if someone else is trying it or have tried it, you know, we give it a go. You know? So be interested to see how it comes out. Because the first comp now is on the 28th. So One thing we were talking about the other night, if you've got trouble bobbling the bottom of the corners, um, is that the... Uh, is shortening the flaps, especially if they go to the wingtip, all the way to the wingtip, because they're in a vortex out there. And Dennis was telling us about that. And it makes a lot of sense if you, if you cut the flaps back a little shorter so that they don't go out to the tips. Is your plane like that? Or is it got, do they stop before the tips? It's built, it's a plane built by Barry Robertson, and it's a very good plane. I mean, he, he's, I think he's eight, eight, nine times British champion, so he knows his stuff, you know. Um, and um, I just went to that little bit of a sharper corner, uh, just to keep you um, closer to the top end, you know, of uh, what, what we seem to be playing. Everybody seems to have a reasonably sharp corner, and it's pretty good. Um, but I just wanted to try to see if I can get it a bit, a bit sharper. Um, I, I got two identical planes apart from the wing section. One is a thicker wing and one is a thinner wing. And the thinner wing will turn sharper than the thicker wing. So I just wanted to just alter the control a little bit to bring it on a bit faster to try and get Yeah. 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 If it's, you don't mind finding a little, flying a little faster of the thin yeah. wing cuts through the air really just well used to it too just have to you know fly it some more and get a little bit used to the airplane yes i mean and and as they say the comp is only next week the first comp the first central line which is the team places uh we do six of them uh but the, i i got a terrible habit i i you shouldn't do it but i i you end up changing things last minute yeah. <laughs> Uh, I know you're not supposed to do it, but it, you've got a tendency, the competitiveness comes out, and you think, oh, I just want to try, would that be a bit better? Would that, you know, is it making it worse? So you, you're undecided, so I end up changing. I can always go back to my old settings, because I always uh, make a note of them, but uh, it's, it's, it's not uncommon for me to change something last minute, although I shouldn't. Uh, it seems to work out okay, actually. But uh, you know, so are you flying glow or no? I'm flying electric. Um, I'm flying oh, yeah, the burger system. So okay. and I just uh, I've just acquired my first shark 
of Andre. Uh, oh. I ordered uh, when I come back from Hungary. Um, I was so impressed with it. I ordered a couple of them. Uh, well, four to be precise. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I had my first one anyway. It's basically I, I'm one of three partners in a flooring company, and I've just not got the time to be building. I, I, I really haven't. Um, and uh, it's bad enough finding the time to fly to be competitive without building as well. So. But for me, it's easier to buy models. I know it's not the way to go for some people, but it's just easier, you know? Uh, I think if I had to build them and play about with glow engines, uh, I'd probably have trouble getting on the team. Too. So by flying electric, I'm either buying models in that I know work well, it seems to get me on the team okay, you know? Well, I tell you what, they're all impressive. They're at... Uh... The world championships there's no doubt about it oh yes i mean uh well very impressive to be honest with you i remember when i went to hungary um and i got out of the car and i first saw ego fly in uh andre um and his brother um who else did i see um i can't remember the one or two others anyway and i, and I just I looked at the car, I thought, let's pack it from home. <laughs> you know, it, it's just another league, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. That's, that's, that's the main thing, you know. Now, are you using, um, uh, what motor are you using? Right then. Well, that's interesting because I'm using a, they've stopped making the motor now. I'm using a Turnigy Aerostar. Um, and it's a, a 900 watt motor, it's a quadcopter motor, it is, and it can turn a 13.7 free blader. And it's low revs, um, it does about 8,000, 8,500 RPMs. So we 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 are running between 8, 2 and 8, 5,000 uh, RPMs, and it's low uh, revs for plenty of pull. Um, and it seems to work quite well. I haven't tried a higher revving motor yet. I have acquired my first Cobra, uh, which will run on a five cell, which will run a smaller prop, high revs, but I haven't tried it yet. I've got a couple of MVVSs. I put one in the shark. Uh, so it'll be interesting to try because that will be, um, it'll be a smaller propeller, obviously revving higher. Uh, so it'll be interesting where that one comes up like. Have uh, you tried the Axie motor? Pardon? Hit that Axie? That um, I haven't tried any Axie, no. I haven't tried any Axie. I, I basically, I, I've only tried what the likes of our guys have been trying. Okay. Um, and to be honest with you, um, I know a lot of people don't use the, the bigger prop for the thicker pitch. Uh, but our conditions are awful, to be honest with you. We've got some awful conditions. Um, it's always windy. It's, it's never good, to be honest with you, especially in my hometown. Um, so I weighed up that using the thicker pitch prop, and three blader, a 13 inch diameter, uh, it have served me quite well in bad conditions, whereas uh, a more of a higher rev in prop with a smaller blade i'd be struggling a little bit um and i found this out you know at nats it worked really well you know it, it went through the wind and, and we were having 26 mile an hour gusts and uh, the plane managed to cope with it okay so for the all round conditions i stayed with it for a minute you know until i until i experienced and this probably this probably is you know obviously better systems out there uh but I, I need a bit more experience on them but don't forget i've been out of it for 36 years so there's a lot i'm missing yeah in, well, um, in information you know? samantha's airplane we're using like 90 i mean 85 percent of the battery on yeah. her with that axi motor and it ran so hot i mean 
it was like 160 some degrees. This is yet to be actually, is it? Yeah, and I want to change. I was getting ready to cut the nose off the airplane and because that, I don't know, the setup in there was made for that Axie motor. And it's got to be back mounted and stuff like that, but I'm I'm not a fan of it. I uh, the Cobras run, I think, cooler and use less battery. And I've been using the Arrowwine motors, and they don't run near the temperature that that Axie runs. No, the the turbos you had to start don't run back up to be honest with you. Yeah, um, we we use um, we we are running them on four cells. I, I'm I'm running the Aerostar on a 3700 four cell, and it weighs. Let me get my calculations. I think it's three three hundred and seventy grams. I think it is. If I'm right, which is which is not bad, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to double check it on Hobby King site. It's about three hundred seventy grams. A little over twelve ounces. Or wait, wait. wait. Oh. On that uh, that axe, is that a uh, twenty eight twenty six? I think so. Whatever that one, Igor. Yeah. Okay. But that airplane was also pretty heavy, wasn't it? Sixty four ounces. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's too much. I. I, don't know, I think that's too much airplane for that motor. I, I agree. You should be running the thirty five. Uh, with a or a big or something like that would, would do better for you. That's, I'm gonna I'm stripping it down and it's getting monocoat wings and stuff. I'm getting the weight down on this damn thing. So we added a damn weight yep. to the paint it and everything. So I know I can I can scratch almost a pound off of it. But well you get the, you get that much off of it. it, it almost won't matter what motor you use. It'll be great. So you know, it, it's just a deal to where when we were there, we wanted more out of the motor, and I didn't dare to um, turn it up anymore for the reason I'd burn up the motor or the batteries or mm -hmm. these were coming out hotter and crap, and the motor was just smoking hot. I mean, you couldn't put your finger on it and touch that motor. It was that hot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. Well, that's, about, that's about where the, the epoxy that holds the magnets, that's about where it lets go. Right, and I didn't dare because everybody's like, "Give us some more, give it," you know, so she can power through some of this. And it's like I can't. We we'll end up burning everything up. So, I mean, we're getting out of it what we could. I actually backed it down a little bit while we were there, just to try to make it run a little cooler and stuff like that. I couldn't get the the Igor to you know to come in and you know uh, give it a little more boost and stuff like that. And it's like it is what it is and. But we didn't get the airplane done in time, and I didn't get enough testing done. But, you know, that 2,800 battery just wasn't enough. I needed 3,000, a little better than 3,000 to, mm -hmm. you know. Are they five or six cells, Steve? Oh, man. Yeah, 28 six cells what I was flying. How heavy are them batteries? Uh... 14 ounces. Um, how many grams? How many grams is that? Was it 30 grams to the ounce? I think something like that. I can. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Close enough. 29. 29 grams to the ounce. Yeah, multiply that out. Because um, one of our lads is trying uh, because because there's no turnage air to start available now from all you can only the 500 kv and not the 720 uh which i got he's trying um i'm trying the cobra uh which will run off a five cell which will rev higher which is which is what they're using at, at the moment i saw them you know in the world in in france um but one of our lads is trying one of the Cobras, um, I'm not sure what version it is, but it runs a four cell. Uh, it's very similar spec to the Turner Giera star we use it. Um, so he's trying that and he, it's swing, it can swing a big prop. It's swinging a 13.7 three blader. Um, and it's looking promising. He's, 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 quite, he's quite happy with it, I think, at the moment. Yeah, I see. Uh, 
I, I had bought the Cobra motor. I had bought the five cell, and I talked to Dennis about that. I had a different airplane, and we went with this one, and then I ended up rebuying everything again because a Cobra wouldn't fit in it, and everybody's like, well, this setup, you know, the damn motor has to go through the spinner hole and then it's mounted in the back, and the Cobra is just too big around. It was too big to put it in that way, so I just did it, but I was disappointed with, you know, a lot of the stuff I, I made the call on. I, I feel bad because I really hampered Samantha and how the airplane, you know, would fly the power and stuff like that and what we could do with it, but it is what it is, and it was a good learning experience. Yeah, I think that would have I would have loved to have been able to do that when I was a kid, junior or senior, world champ. Yeah, she may try to go back again next year. She's really thinking hard about it. So, yeah, I, I think the one that one of our lads is trying is a Cobra. Um, it's eight twenty kV. Um, it's a thirty five twenty twelve. It'll run a four cell. Do eight eight twenty kV on a four cell. He seems to be running that. Uh, I think he's quite happy with it actually. Um, we haven't tried any five or six cell um, batteries to be honest with you. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, yeah, he seems to be happy with it. So I'll be speaking to him in about a week's time anyway. I'll see how he's getting on with it. You know did like about the six cell was is that they charge so much faster uh right okay you know that's what i loved about it i mean you could charge batteries bang 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 to where you get the big four cell packs and you're sitting there waiting you know to i think um well i've got um i've i've got a leisure battery in my uh, van which i i can chuck four batteries on uh, when I'm on my way up to a comp, um, I just put them on a balance charge, and by the time I get there, they charge. Um, but um, I just usually keep enough batteries anyway, so I can, I can click them on and off, you know. Uh, so I, I've always got at least uh, five or six batteries charged in my box, you know. Oh, okay. But, uh, and, the, and they'd only, the Hobby King, um, Dippy 37s are about um, 20, 22 um, pounds in sterling. I don't know what that is in dollars. Um, for a battery? Pardon? It's a 22 pounds for a battery? Yeah, it's about 22 pounds sterling. Oh. You know? so what's that? Probably $27 here. That's cheap. Yeah, they, they, they are cheap batteries. They, and and uh, at the end of the season, I, I'll just throw them away and get some new ones, you know. It's just cheaper. In actual fact, we uh, I had to get four, three. I ordered six batteries um, to go to Bulgaria. And I've sent them over to Bulgaria. Three of them are for me and three of them are for my teammates, Steve White. Uh, so we, because we can't take them on the plane, obviously. So I've sent them over already, um, and hopefully then they'll be there uh, in uh, J J July, I think, is it? The, you know what, the, you know? any problems with our batteries? I brought four batteries, and um, I put them in a, a LiPo safe bag, put the caps on them, taped them, put them in there. They looked at them at, in uh, the United States, and said, okay, when we came back from France, they didn't look at it. They just x-rayed it and like, okay. And bang, we're, we went home with them. Did they really? Yeah. Right. It was zero problems. Once it was in that, because I heard if I can show you, it's just a cheap lipo safe bag. Right, I didn't know that. Because I thought they were there. I thought there are some airlines that wouldn't take them on the plane. This is what I got for the bag. All oh, right. And yeah, some of the batteries are still in it. I don't Where'd know. Where did you get that from, Steve? Let's see how I capped them. Where did you get the bag from? Uh, the local hot is called Common Sense RC. All oh, right, okay. And oh, uh, 
I think I've heard of that, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just a Velcro thing on it, and it says lipo safe. And when they seen that, it was like, there you go. So you you discharge them right down as well. Yeah, I just put them in storage charge and storage charge. Right. Okay. Egg, yeah. But that little cap is what they like too. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So I put the cap on and I just put some tape around that and I taped up the end here for the balance plug, yeah. threw them in the bag, and oh, right. we had no problems. We were going to let somebody else have them if we couldn't bring them back. Well, that's, that's what I planned to do. It. I put, I bought three, and I thought I, I'll probably be leaving them out there, you know? Um, but we flew British Airways back home. Well, we flew British Airways both ways, but yeah, um, yeah zero problems. I mean, it was so easy to get the light bulbs through in the so bag. Is it a case of you put the light bulbs in the bag, put them in your suitcase, and just let it go through security and, uh, as it, it is? Carry on, yeah. You gotta put it. You can't put them on in the body of the plane, but you can have them on your carry on. So you right then. So you put them up. You add them on the carry on. Yeah. yeah. Um, between your hand luggage, basically, yeah. And you but, put them. You, you you obviously add that bag, and and as you open your case up, it all went through, yeah. Yeah. I I tell you what, I'd get a bag. Yeah. Put a battery in it that ain't the no ones you're gonna throw away. Yeah. Take it with you. See if they let you get on the airplane with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. bet you know. I don't know what airline you're flying, but British Airways gave us no problem whatsoever. It was so simple to get them. I was so worried about that. You know, I I'd, I'd call the um, Thunder Power, and I forget who is it. Belgium that Thunder Power is at to try just in case they took my batteries. We could go there and, and get some batteries or whatever and work it all out. Pardon hey, me? Let me uh, interrupt just a second. Um, Mark, whenever somebody's holding up something that you want to see closer, if you will click or tap their little picture at the bottom of the screen, okay. you get a white border around it, and that'll, that'll give them priority, and you can see it on a big screen. When you get through looking at it, just tap it again. And... Uh, I just want, wanted to make sure you knew that. Carry on. Tom, don't mean to interrupt, but I got to get going, guys. Oh, okay, okay, Tom. Well, to get late. You. Nice seeing y'all. And yeah. uh, yep, I'll see if I can come on there on Monday. Yeah, right. man. Have a great weekend. Do something fun and come back and tell us about it. Oh yeah. Oh man, I got to. I'm. I'm. I, I'm in my element. You know, I'm a cook. You know, and yeah. I got a great big uh, Easter deal going. I can't wait. Good deal. No, I'm going to bail out on you folks, too. Uh, it's been fun, but uh, see you next week, I no, guess. Okay. Ready? Thanks, yeah. We'll see you all later. Mark, nice meeting you. Hope to see you next week, too. Tell you guys. Uh, yeah. Enough you that I ordered a uh, um, one of them profile mounts that, oh, he's gone, that he makes. But, yeah, oh, well. um, see how they are. Hmm. How much did you say them light or bags were? Steve, the safe ones. See you guys later, bud. You want to... I don't know if you click on me. Maybe you can see it better. Yeah, I can see it. How much of they did you say? How much was it? Yeah. $8? Oh, so it's, it's worth getting one and trying it then, isn't it? Obviously. That's why I said, you know, for that, you get one. And uh, I know that, like, Hobby yeah. King sells them. Yeah. You know, it doesn't say Common Sense RC, but they got the LiPo safe bags. Yeah. And yeah. uh yeah, they're fairly cheap. If you throw an old battery in it, see if it goes. I, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. I'll tell you, it, it's probably worth me trying it on the way back because at the end of the day, if they keep them, well, I was gonna leave them out there anyway, but I just don't really matter. But I, I, I don't think I don't think you're gonna have a problem. I mean, we heard all the horror stories. You know, um Thunder Power told us that and he was going to give us a deal on the way back. He said, just leave them there. Um, and I'll give you a really good deal on on four more batteries when you get back, you know, if you fly Thunder Power. So we're like, okay. But it was it was so much easier getting them back than it was getting them there. They did more inspections here in the U.S. 
which they still let us take them, but they told them they had to look every everything and stuff like that. But when I went through uh, went through the the thing there in France, put them up there, they ran them through the X ray machine, and you're good to go. And they looked at that and they said, "What are they?" I said, "Lipo batteries." Steam lipo same bag. You're good to go. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So I think it's worth trying because it cost. Uh, I think with the postage, I think. Uh, hundred hundred and eighty pound, I think, something like that. Oh, hundred and eighty something. And me and my me and my uh me and my buddy um Steve White we just split it then. Uh he's having three and I'm having three. Yeah, um, so for, yeah. for five or six pounds to try yeah. it, it ain't that much money for what it costs. Hey Steve, was that carry on or was that in your luggage? That was carry you can't take them on luggage. You got it has to be uh, carry on. Okay. So I had uh oh with my carry on, I'm trying to remember. I didn't take an exacto knife. I took the screwdrivers and stuff, and that had to be on the uh the check baggage, so you can't get your hands on right. that. Yeah. And then uh yeah, just the batteries. I but I put on carry on and makes your bag heavy. But yeah, I bet. I mean, like that I mean, it was a piece of cake. I mean, I, I that was the biggest thing I was worried about, and that was the least amount of our problems. You never know from one time to another what they're going to check and how how tight they're going to be looking. So, well, the biggest problem, I and this guy didn't catch it. They make you take off your shoes and all this kind of stuff and go through that machine. Well, I had. At the time, I was wearing glasses. I took my glasses off, all that. I left my watch on. So nobody catches this. So they say, put your arm up. So I do this. So the machine goes off, me, whatever. So they come back and said, yeah, they're looking, you know, on my hair and all this kind of stuff for some kind of metal. And I go back in it again. Eh, you know, and it's like, do you have a plate or anything? <laughs> and, I'm like, no. and I'm like, I don't understand. I look on that screen. I said, that looks like my watch. I took my watch, and this guy's like, took my watch off, and I went through. But yeah, that was my biggest thing was I didn't take my watch off. Nobody noticed it, and it kept showing it up on that x-ray thing. Yeah. Bob Bishop just posted uh, that he looked at Amazon just a minute ago, and he said, search for lipo safe, and he said, bunches of bags come up. Yeah, it was, I just went down to the local hobby shop, and, and uh, they had them. I figured I'd take a chance, and I bought that the night before we left because that was like, oh yeah, if you put them in the bag, you know, people on stunt hanger and stuff, if you put them on the bag in a bag and stuff, you get no, you don't have a problem. So I ran to the hobby shop. That's what they had. I bought it and yeah. It so beautiful. that'll contain them. That'll contain a meltdown, I guess, without uh, the outside of the bag getting hot enough to ignite its surrounding yeah. stuff. Okay. You know. I you know, what's really weird is, is I hear all this stuff about lipos, but we tried to set them on fire and never could get them to burn. We even threw them in a, in a damn fire and they don't go, they don't yeah. do there, there are plenty of examples of them catching on fire though. But Remember we, the Samsung the, Galaxy phones a, a couple of years ago? They used to do it. Yeah, I guess. Um, I remember, having, uh, I remember having a duck lipo um, on the field about uh, about a year ago, and my father put it in his pocket. And I said, don't put it in your pocket, they danger it. No, no, it's fine, he said. He put it in the jacket pocket. And I said, the battery isn't any good. I said, uh, um, I, I think if I remember, I touched it, I accidentally, I touched them as I was coming out of the box. I, and it stuck together. I pulled it apart. But when, when normally, you know, they would swell and smoke, but it didn't. And it broke the wire inside as it goes off the battery terminal. Because I tried to just give it a quick touch, you know, expecting it to sort of, because it was already melted the terminal. It wasn't any good. Um, nothing happened. So then obviously the wire had broken somewhere and solved it itself, you know. So I said to him, forget about the back. I said, we we'll check it away. He put it in his pocket. I said, don't put it in your pocket. No, it's fine. I said, don't put it in your pocket. Are they dangerous? How are they dangerous? 
So I said, look, and I put it up, I put it on the uh, floor, you know, on the concrete where we play it. I took an hammer from the van, smacked it with a camera, <laughs> it just exploded. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, my brother. And I said, you still want to put it in your pocket? He said, no. It exploded, though? Yeah, it exploded. If you Google light bulb batteries exploding, you know, they, you know, you see them exploding and catch fire. In fact, um, you know the ammunition boxes? Mm. Yeah. You put them in ammunition boxes. But there's, on the YouTube, you see them swell the ammunition box and push it out if you've got a couple Holy of shit, that's a strong box too. So what they tell you to do is take the rubber seal out of the ammunition box so air can come out. It's, it's not compressing itself. Oh, okay. uh, and they say you've got to take the seal out. That's why I was surprised that they still let you on the plane with the safe pack because, you know, they will still push you away, you know. Well, maybe because it's not sealed, that it's just that Velcro top on yeah. it. It's over. Yeah. It can vent out or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I had one battery that I wrecked the the balance lead on, and I decided to try to solder it up. Well, I must have got some solder in there, and it it shorted, and it smoked. But it, don't, it didn't smoke that long. It just burned up the wires, and it quit. But at first, I thought I was going to have something that was really going to be bad, but it just went, <gasps> smoke come out, and that was it. We keep a we got a sand bucket out at our field, and uh, that's where you're supposed to put them if they start going bad, or if you wreck one or something. I saw a guy on YouTube shooting uh, uh, shooting bullets at at them, and they they set on fire when you put a bullet through it we tried it with pellets we shot it with pellets and it didn't do nothing really yeah it screwed the pack all up but it didn't smoke nothing so i don't maybe we just didn't hit it right or whatever what what i found is um one about a quarter charge in it um there wasn't any good i put it on the wall and i drove it i drove a six inch nail in the center started it and I give it a bang, and then it starts to smoke. And then, uh, because it's got a, a metal nail, and it'll smoke. Obviously, if it was more charged, it would explode. So I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but uh, there was hardly any anything in it. Uh, something like about eighty percent, or something like that. You know. Um, One week I, was, you know, got done flying it, and it was all puffy and all that kind of stuff, and. You could tell that the motor wasn't running so good that a cell was gone in it, and that one didn't, maybe if it was charged up, it would uh, it would really go off. But yeah, these I just I put them in a storage cell down to three point eight volts and per cell, and yeah, they they didn't give me any problems. We didn't didn't have a problem with. But like I said, I bought the caps, I capped them, so if something can't t touch or and all that kind of good stuff. Well, I, I got nothing to lose giving them. A, I think we got nothing to lose giving them a, a try, put them in the bag just to come home in. Because it's a pity the way it's done buying three new batteries, using them for a couple of days and then throwing them away, or just yeah. giving them to someone. And I, you know, I, I don't mind giving them to someone up there, but if we can bring them back. That's all the better. Who, who are you flying? What, what, what airline are you flying? Um, do you know what? I'm not sure. I booked it and I got the paperwork in the office. I'm not sure what airline it was actually. I didn't pay attention. I've got it written down on the uh, information we've had emailed back. Oh. I can't remember what one. I know we fly it to, we fly it to Sophia. That's all the information I know at the moment. Unless I get the paperwork back out I got in the office. Um, yeah, because, you know, I booked British Airways because that was the best. And actually, we flew United on the United Airplanes, but British Airways was uh, like six hundred dollars a flight cheaper. Than United, so because they had all these flights, and I'm like, wow, that, you know, I'll fly British Airways, and and we flew on a United airplane. So I don't know really how that worked, but I got on uh, British Airways website, 
and it tells you how big a battery, so many, you know, so many watts of power in it or whatever you can bring. And a six cell 28 or four cell 35, they all fell in within that. You know, because some of these computers got bigger, a lot more battery power than what them are. Mm. So, but yeah, we had we had zero problems. So, what uh, what Samantha play in this year? What um, playing? we're doing? I can go get it and show you something. We're gonna try. Um, I'll be right back, Mark. Ruski. After uh, Steve does his show and tell, we'll probably close it up for the night, but I'm glad yeah, you were able to join us. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. We spoke via email a couple of times, didn't we? Yes, we spoke by email a few times. Um, I, had, I had a terrible job trying to get, on, trying to get um, logged into Stunt Hanger because I've been back after a 36 year break and i come back about 2016. but what i couldn't remember is 2013 i'd already just logged in re uh, registered yeah just to have a look at the stunt hanger um forum and whatnot but never used it just had a quick browse and that was it and my old email address which was mountain.crew, it was a virgin.net address, and I switched over to BT, so I've got no access to it. So even the computer I don't own anymore, and I haven't got it set up on anything, so I couldn't even press forgotten and email back. Yeah, uh, now so, I remember. I remember the uh, conversations. That was when yeah. I was worried that Sparky had made you mad and run you off, <laughs> but... Uh, well, I don't know. Like, oh, speaking of Sparky, here he comes again. Hang on, let me let him in. Hey, boss. Hey, Sparky. Must have got something to eat. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, I managed to. Um, um, so then I, I, I put in Mark William, and then it came up. This is already being used. So I put in Mark W, and then it wouldn't accept me. And then I, I was trying to find a way out to get all of you to, to try and tell you, you know. Uh, but anyway, I got on on the end. But the reason I didn't come on, it was four o'clock in the morning, and I was lying in bed with an iPad. So yeah, hey, hello. Yeah, you're hey. real light on your speaker, Sparky. What the heck's wrong here? Yeah, we got you. I can turn you up right here. There you go. He's having a problem. There we go. Now we can hear you. He's having a problem. No, not anymore. Uh, this was the fellow that uh, a couple of weeks ago we were trying to help him get in, uh, and uh, he had already had a stunt hanger uh, membership and. Uh, it had been years since he'd been on, but now he's now he's here with us. Yeah, I need to go and prune out all those inactive members. Yeah, this is Mark Williams from England or from uh, Wales. Wales. Okay, well, hello, Mark. How are we doing, buddy? I'm all right. This, hey, is, this is Samantha's new plane she come up with. It has a sub rudder on it and stuff. It's uh basically it started out as a Starus, and then we put a uh, SB11 nose on it because it's electric to get right. to get the nose out some on it stuff like that. Um, when I figured it weighs ready to cover now, it's that. 652 grams. Oh, 23 ounces here. So I'm going to try to get it in, in the low 50s. We'll see how that works out. What power are you putting in there? 
That's going to have that Cobra. Um, oh, I can't think which one it is. Seven hundred KV. The one in the five stroke six seven. Yeah. Bart, you're breaking up. It's the you're one. Right. That you're right. up I can't. You, can you guys hear what he's saying? Uh, we just started breaking up a, a couple of seconds ago. I hear that chatter in the background now. I, it's hard for me to understand anybody right now. Is that the one, that, the Cobra, that they seem to be using? Yeah, it's the Cobra that, um, oh, I'm trying to think the guy in our, um, Hernandez flies and stuff. Another one. Yeah. I got, got, got it. Um, it's the only thing. Uh, yeah, I know the Cobra. Yeah, so that's what we're going to try is going to have the Igor system in it with that with that motor. Okay, I just came in because I thought he was having a problem. So, see you guys later. Okay, see you later, Sparky. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. When Sparky uh, came in, that chat started again. It's a Cobra 37, 15, 18. Is that the one? Yeah. I think that's the one, isn't it? Yeah. 740 KVA. They're using uh, under camber 11, 5 and eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. That's, got, a, that's what we're going to try this time. I've got, uh, I, I've had one off Roger Lads um, to try. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Um First chance I get, I'll be giving it a try now. Yeah, it's, you know, it's been in the plane. It's all ready for it. It's just now we got to um, start finish. you know. We're going to monocoat the wing and stuff because I got carbon fiber inlaid in the wing. And so it's really super strong with that carbon fiber in there. So I think we're going to try now with uh, plastic covering and stuff to keep the weight down what's the carbon fiber like a cloth is it like um um like a tissue cover is it is that what you mean oh right okay right. i embedded it down in the foam right and it's just i forget how many millimeter it is it's really thin stuff but when, you, I, say, when you said you embedded it down in the foam that's a foam core is it yes yep all uh, right because it, it's, it's made to look like the traditional wing. Yeah. And there, there's one of our RC guys. He's passed away now. And that's the way he used to build his RC planes. Well, uh, I figured, you know, they usually completely sheet it. Well, yeah. rid of all the balsa, and the biggest part is the glue. And then with that carbon fiber only, I think for both wings, I added... Oh, less. Um, I guess it would be about seven or eight grams, mm. like that. Putting that in there, so I know I lost. The whole wing came out at nine ounces. I just have a hard time translating what what that would be in grams, which you're used to. No, believe it or not, ounces I work in. That's why I have trouble converting it to to um to grams. Yeah. So about two hundred and fifty five grams that wing weight. All done. What how heavy in, in ounces are you expecting the model to weigh? About fifty three ounces. That's what I'm hoping for. But I'm always light, but I it was that's with the battery and everything. So if we can come fifty-five ounces, I'd be fifty-six. I'd be really happy. What's the wingspan and wing area on that one? That's six hundred and thirty square inches. Um, it's not as big as like a SV eleven. It's a basically it's the the Starist version. That's where the S comes from, an SV eleven. 
Mm-hmm. SP11 is what around 700. This is 630. So hopefully it'll work for her, but she just can't fly a 60 ounce airplane. She's just not big enough. Yeah, it's cool. It's, when we when we had the nationals, our British nationals, it was twenty. It was just in twenty six mile an hour wind, and in the in the end, there was only three of us that said we carry on. And um, because I'm a lump of a guy, um, you know, it's just a case of hanging on to the plane. But my uh, my my mate. I think he was doing the, I think he was doing eights, I think he was, all his uncle eights, I think he was eights, and the wind was so strong, he nearly pulled him over, um, but um, I suppose a little bit of advantage of having a little bit of meat in him, <laughs> it helps. Well, that was like, you know, at least, at, you know, during the world championships on the official flights, the wind wasn't that bad for Samantha, but when we first got there and we were practicing, I mean, she'd come in and she had no color in her skin. It, it just, she had to grip so hard that her hands inside were white with, with no blood left in them, you know? <laughs> and it was really hurting her hands, but at least the wind, you know, let up at the world championship. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but. You said when the wind was blowing, she flew better than everybody else. And She's a really, well, what it is, is that I didn't realize that you know, our field was so bad with turbulence and everything. And, you know, they were saying that there in France, guys here in the United States didn't like flying there because the wind was so turbulent. Well, Samantha's really used to flying in turbulent. I mean, our field is way worse than what that field is. From, I mean. Yeah, so she's used to it. Yes. Yeah, so she was so used to it, it, it didn't bother her at all. And so when it was really gusty and windy, it's like it was old hat when the with that airplane and just comp, you know, steady air. We needed more power and stuff, you know, but we yeah. just we couldn't get it. But, but yeah, real windy conditions. It did find it. I like that Igor system in that. I mean, when uh, the wind blew and stuff, it'd give it more power and stuff like that. But. But yeah, we're gonna try this one. I got another idea on a another airplane that I ordered wood for today. And if she's really gonna f- fly next year at the world, try to make the world championship team, I'm gonna build this one. And uh, it's gonna be a take apart, but the wing is gonna be done. It's gonna go together like an RC airplane. Mm-hmm. But uh, the wings in one piece, you mean? Is that? Yeah. I don't know. So I'm going to do a one piece wing and uh, and stuff like that. And I'll just bring it over in a, uh, um, oh, it's not a ski thing, um, snowboard. Where, where is the world in 2000? And it, Poland. It is Poland. I heard it was, but I wasn't sure. Yeah. But yeah, we'll see because they raised the age to 21 now. So she's thinking about doing it again in Poland. All oh, right, that'd be interesting. But, uh, in the, the, was it, there was only was it two or three girls in France? Two. Two. Right. Yeah, that was a Bulgarian girl, wasn't it? Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, she flew quite well. Girls that flew uh, racing, though, but in. In uh, stunt, there was only the two girls. I think there was four girls there all together, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think combat, they had one or, one or two. Yeah. But yeah, there was a, f- a couple girls there, so that was good. Was it you? Was it your first world then? Yes. Yep. How did you find it? We had a blast. Yes, it was me. It was my first one. And what what I found really nice about it is you're meeting everybody, every race, color, and you just all getting on, and it was fantastic, you know? Well, everybody said, they said, oh, man, you're going to France? They said, 
French people hate Americans. Yeah. And uh, when I got back, I said, we were treated so good there. I said, we were treated better there than we are at home. And Bob Hunt said, he goes, that's because they didn't know you that good over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we had one, one lady, and it was twice. We went into a Aldi's grocery store over there. Yeah. And we'd pick up, we'd buy bread and some meat and stuff like that, mustard or whatever for lunch. And boy, she just gave us a hard time. I mean, the one time. And then because I didn't speak French and I don't read French, we got in the wrong line. And I went to pay with the debit card. And it was a cash line only. And she threw a fit. And I said, I got I got money. Oh, she voided it out, made us go into another line and just went nuts. And some older lady, well, older, about my age or whatever, she was in there. And uh, a younger lady was trying to help us and she was throwing a fit. And this older lady I thought was going to beat the crap out of this woman. She shoved her basket. <laughs> Bam! Boy, they were she was pointing her finger in that other woman's face and walking her back across the store. And I'm like, Oh my God. But that was the only, only thing there. It was just that one woman. Everybody else was so nice. Oh, I found it. It was tremendous. Everybody was nice and they couldn't be more helpful. I found it really, uh, it was really nice. You know? I think the first or second night we were there, I didn't realize that everything closed early there. And we went into an Italian restaurant that was right there by the field. And it was like five o'clock and they closed at five. We were there like two minutes early and I didn't realize that. I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay then. No, 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 no. They made us our meal and waited for us to eat and stuff. I mean, that's how nice they were to us. Yeah. yeah. We we're there right at closing time, but you know, we got used to it real quick. Say, okay, these are the times these places close and, you got to go there, and you know, when they're open. And I really liked it, I, you know. And I had trouble um, when, when I was there because of uh, one of my models, perhaps was maybe a bit heavier than other models. I know it was quite heavy when they do the, you know, the line check. Yeah. One of the heavier ones up there. And he pulled it, and I thought he was going to pull the belt right out. And uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, what I found is when I was trying, to, if I tried to turn it a bit too hard, it would drop. Um, so on my last flight, I had to try and turn it, but not not try and turn it too much because I knew it would drop. And the only drop, the only drop I had in one of the final flights, only hourglass, just pulled it just a tad too much, and as it came out, it dropped. Uh, just because of the way. The air was there, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, um, right then, I'll try some VGs, both generators. So I had one of our lads in work. I told him what spec I wanted of him. Uh, me, me and one of my mates, Steve White, uh, he, he, he worked out some rental numbers and various things. And between the two of them, mainly Steve, to be honest with you, um, said, look, this is the size we want them, this is the depth we want them. So I had them made on a little uh, CNC machine at one of the lads, um, not a CNC machine, what do you call them, a 3D printer. Um, one of our lads that works for us, he does RC uh, lorries and trucks and cars and things. So he, I think he's uh, one of his major, no white, and give him a 3D printer for Christmas. So he made them for me. So I put them on this plane this year, um, just after I was flying it with no VGs in still air, pulling hard and it was dropping. So when I put the VGs on, I went back out and it made it, it made a heck of a difference. Um, it just didn't have the drop it was getting. Um, that's, that's one of the main... Um, Things I've noticed 
with them. It, on a heavier model, it seems to be a lot better, you know? See, we didn't get ours in time to put them on before we went over. And hers needed the Vortex generators because it was just 64 ounces was way too much weight for the size of that airplane. Yeah, mine's 68, I think, right now. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a heck of a weight, you know? And so, uh, well, hers is only um, a 640 square inch wing. I mean, that airplane should have been down in the 50 ounce range, you know? And we needed them, and we didn't get them, and that was a problem too. But next time, we'll be more prepared. You know, I already told her, I said, if you want to go, if you really want to go to Poland and you want to work hard, I'll order a damn uh, from Russia for you. But, you know. Order what, sonny? Huh? What did you say? You order what? An airplane from Russia. One of oh, them. Okay, okay. You know what ones are they then? Um, I don't. It's the one that everybody was flying there at uh at the World Championships. The the Russian guy that makes them. Uh, yeah, Shinko. You should, yeah, your Shinko airplanes. Oh, uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, so I told her I'd get you know I'd get one of them. Isn't that what you said you just got? Was it your Shinko? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, Ukrainian, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Oh, Ukrainian. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's the I, um, Yeah, I think I waited. I think it's two years for my first shark I waited. Oh, two years? Yeah, yeah, there's a waiting list for them. Um, and I, I believe three years for the yak, roughly. So um, this will be my third year going in. I ordered four, two sharks, two yaks. So hopefully I'll have a, a shark next year. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm hoping to get a yak. I don't know yet. I know what Yuri said. Um, his parents are getting older in age now, and he got to spend him, him and his brother going to spend a bit more time looking after them. So the building is taking a bit slower. Um, so you know, it is what it is. You know. Yeah, well, I guess she won't get one then because I could, you know, if they're that far out, then uh, she couldn't get one in time. I know the other, I know there are one or two other people doing ready maids. They're a lot quicker than I. Um, there's, there's one or two on Facebook. Um, um, I, I'm trying to remember who, who they are now. I, I, I've seen them. Um, they're a lot quicker. Uh, they're not the Yashenko ones, though. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, when we were there, and I never heard back from Hernandez or anything, but uh, Kaz Amato ordered 10 uh, from a guy, I think, in Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan or one of these yeah. places. And they've seen it there, and I guess it's really nice. He's ordered 10, have you? And they wanted $800 for it. And I'm like, hell yeah, I want one. But I've never heard anything about if he's making them now or not or whatever happened with that. Right, okay. But I'm like, 800 bucks. I mean, that's that was with a case and everything. I'm like, holy shit. You got more, more money into building one yourself than what that costs. When you work out, you know, the cost of all the materials... And all the time you spent to build one, if you're struggling for time through family commitments, work, and various things, you know, it's probably the cheapest option to buy. But you know, there's nothing like building your own model. Uh, I, I, you know, I completely agree. But um, you know, for some people, it, it, you know, it's not it's not so easy. It, it's it's not an option. You know. Especially with the take apart stuff. I mean, yeah. we went to Chicago every weekend, and it's a four hour drive there and a four hour drive home. So Samantha and I would get up at and leave at five in the morning, get there at nine, and work till about five o'clock at night with Chris. Luckily, he was doing it, and then drive all the way home and get home about 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then I go to work the next day. It's a long, it's a long old drive, isn't it? You know? And I forget, 
shit and how many trips we made there, 10 trips. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it was hell. You know, one hey. time he had the whole weekend off and we went down on a Saturday and I got a motel and spent the night and we went back on Sunday. But he couldn't always there to help us doing a take apart. I've yeah. never been one. I mean, they're tough to do. Get everything right and and stuff like that, you know. Hey, fellas, I'm going to have to call it a night. All right. Yeah. yeah I, I'll, I'll enjoy it as well. Thank you very much, lads. I enjoy that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody that came in on video and all you tubers out there. Thanks for coming. We got eight still out there left. And uh, I appreciate your donations, too. We got some donations tonight. So that's great. And uh, so y'all all do something fun. Come back. Tell us about it Monday and uh, have a great weekend. Happy just, Easter, and we'll see you later. Pub, close the pub down, and then come and get on. It'll be about the right time. Good night. <laughs>